Hello and welcome. This is Gray Hughes of Gray Hughes Investigates on YouTube. This channel evaluates all aspects of true crime. As you are aware, videos and live streams in this genre often discuss elements of crime that may be disturbing to some viewers. If necessary, take the precautions needed to avoid these feelings. Factual information related to cases is the key to fostering rational true crime discussions. Fortunately, you will find that here. Please hit the like button only once, share the video, and subscribe if you like my content. Thank you very much for watching. Looks like Chloe's in, uh, well, it looks like they're both in Blue's bed, but the camera, you can't see it. Here, let me see if I switch it around. <laughs> I guess you can kind of see him over there. <laughs> Buried in there. How's everybody doing? Serious Black, American Lady, Jessica Schubach, Nikki Zubz. Regina Carter, CJ, American Lady, Tina Susser, Pam NYC, Wise Child, Jessica Schubach. All right. Wow, well, how's everybody doing tonight? So I put a I put a, a video today, but uh, it doesn't really have a lot of views. I don't know if it was the timing or whatever it was, but uh, you know, it is what it is. I mean, I thought it was a pretty good video, but tonight I thought we'd go over the same information, but let people call in or you know, like with the model on the screen. I mean, we could do this multiple times, like different shows where people, you know, because I think it's, it was interesting reading some of the comments because there were things that were like, oh yeah. Now, what I don't like is when people go, Gray, you had the door opening the wrong way. Yeah, I, I know that I had the door opening the wrong way. I, I just opened it to so you could see into the room. I wasn't trying to be technical when the door was open. I have all the hinges correctly placed in the, in the house, okay? It's not, uh, that's not something I don't know. And we have the, um, you know, like I said before, our entire scholarship fund has been funded at $6,000 and two students are gonna get 3,000 and I'm, may, I'm putting some people in there to be able to review the uh, scholarship. Um, applications I mean there's literally there's like 200 and something already if you can believe that and it's pretty cool you know reading the different stories that people have and so forth I think some of them are AI written because it's almost exactly worded the same way as when I say true crime uh, you know like hey write a introduction or something you read that and you go yeah so Anyways, hope you guys liked the uh, video earlier. Let's see. Yeah, it's cool to have that many applicants. Uh, you know, the thing is, is us being able to do that relies on you guys, right? So a consistent, you know, every night throughout each month of all the years that we you know, try to, you know, if you guys can are out there and you're able to support the channel, uh, that'd be great because it allows me to keep doing what I'm doing. I'm not a charity intake company or anything. I just donated a huge portion of the income to charity. And that's been an amazing thing that we've done. We've 
got our DNA fund. Uh, we put. Uh, I just got the invoice. We put twenty-eight thousand dollars into the DNA fund last year. I mean, that's nuts. <laughs> I mean, that's. I think that's half of all the income that we brought in, and we put six into the scholarship fund. So that's thirty-four right there, and then the other fifth. Uh, I guess twenty-two thousand went into various other charities. All right. So that's my nightly pitch. If you're able to help support my channel, it allows me to keep doing what I'm doing. Yes, I make an income on YouTube, but you guys are the income. And the, uh, then I try to give away a ton of it, right? So there you go. Yeah, one of them could become that Play-Doh. You never know. Recording in progress. All right. Invitation. Oh yeah, and I was I sort of checked in on the uh, Michelle Traconis trial, and it looks pretty sweet, man. There's like all the surveillance footage that we went over last night. You actually see the footage. Uh, I went out and found the exact spots of each of the shots in the neighborhood there. So when we go over that tomorrow. Because what we're are, we are a day behind on our coverage, so what I'll be doing is shortening it up quite a bit, and then playing it uh, for all the freaks to watch. Hey, thanks, wise child. Appreciate it. Let's see. I'm just getting the zoom thing set up really fast. That's not the number there. And don't bother calling because I'm not going to answer it until I say, hey, everybody, we're ready. Oops, that wasn't it. <laughs> I have no idea what, what that just was there. That was weird. All right. Uh, we got 233 watching now. Hopefully more come in. If you can go out there really quick and share the video, that'd be awesome. Somewhere. <laughs> hey, look at that. Scouting dude. Thank you, man. Jesus. For your speeding fund. And this video was amazing today. I've watched it you really four times, huh? Yeah, I mean, I'm just theorizing, uh, you know, when I look at other things, I'm thinking, well, I screwed up there, I screwed up there, you know, there, it's just so interesting, I think, to try to figure it out, because, you know, we're not going to get to know until there's a trial how it all, what they think happened, right? So it's interesting to try to figure it out, giving, given the limited information that we have currently. All right? Man, it's weird how Chloe's hair looks just like the dead. <laughs> if you made her that color blue, you wouldn't see her except the black eyes sticking out. And thanks so much, Scout and Dude, and Serious Black. The video was amazing today. I've watched it four times. It was so interesting. Well, that's so awesome. I do want to share, uh, I spoke to uh, YouTube's, this guy finally had somebody that actually sort of seemed like they gave a damn you know, it was weird. So I was talking to him about how it doesn't seem like... I have 116,000 subscribers. How come there's a video that I put out that's good that has 4,000 views? I mean, it just doesn't even make any sense, you know? So um, he said, I also took a look at your impressions over the last 28 days. As you can see... On this link, 59% of your 5.3 million impressions came from YouTube recommending your content. You can also see on the link that your viewers found your video 61.1% of the time through the browse feature, just meaning the people who watched. So just browsing around, they found it. This means that YouTube is recommending your videos at an approximate rate of 60%, they said. However, as much as you YouTube recommends your videos, I confirmed 
from this link that only 19% of your 116,000 subscribers have turned on all notifications for your channel. I mean, there's the answer right there, everybody. So right now, uh, go out and like, whatever you have to do, I don't know if you hit unsubscribe and then subscribe again. And when you see the little bell there, hit the notification bell uh, and for all videos, not just uh, like, you know, every once in a while, okay? That's insane, right? <laughs> that's, I mean, that's ridiculous right there. All right, so, I mean, 19% have the button checked for all notifications. Of your subscribers turned on all notifications for your channel and enabled YouTube notifications, this means that even if all notifications are turned on for your channel, if they opted to turn off YouTube notifications on their devices or computer, they would still not be notified, right? So you, if you turned it off on your device, it might not even show up. But isn't that incredible, you guys? Everybody else goes, oh, yeah, yeah, I did it. I, I, that's how I did it. Uh, you didn't, okay? So uh, you're, we're talking about 19%. That's 22,000 people out of the 116 have all notifications, right? That's because you probably uh, checked that one, Jenny. Yeah. Yeah, maybe, did you check the box that says all notifications? <laughs> yeah, well, thanks. Thanks, I appreciate it. Man, that is, that's amazing, though. Jesus. I mean, it's like, it, this is the first time somebody on YouTube, when you call the support, that actually gave a crap and went through and sort of looked at all the different things. Yeah, so that was pretty awesome. So if you're out there, everybody... Make sure, and guess what, guess what, right now there's only 246 people watching and some of them aren't even channel members. And I don't know why we're just getting so f few people watching, you know, it's like, I don't know what the deal is. I don't know how to make it better. You know, somebody else would have 3,000 people watching the same video, right? I, I don't know what the difference is, okay? Um, so, you know, I, I try my best to <laughs> get in here, but... Unfortunately, uh, the 262 people watching right now are the only ones that would have just heard what I just said. And probably a bunch of those already have it turned on, so we're, it's not really going to dent anything. It's almost like you got to do some weird crap where you, um, I mean, make a video on it or something. I mean, I don't know if it's the same for a community. I think community posts count as something, like a... A notification but like today's I put an image on the community section it looked like uh, maybe a hundred people saw it I mean it's just wild okay so if you're out there everybody make sure when you subscribe and if you want just check by unsubscribing and then subscribing again and then it gives you choices and then you uh, you select all videos right I mean if I literally have a uh, where is this thing here it looks like this. There it is, this thing. Here, wa watch this. I have, a, I have an animation right here. Watch. This is what you got to do. <laughs> here it is. Uh, look at it. You hit the subscribe button, right? Then the notification bell, and then all right there. Not personalized, not none. You know, but if you just hit subscribe and go elsewhere, it defaults to personalized. All right, so there it is, everybody. I'm showing you right now on the screen. Give it a shot. All right. But, man, it was, it was interesting to read all that. And it, it, it actually tells you all, all these different things about your videos. I mean, it's all in the analytics portion. But anyways, <clears throat> isn't that wild? All right. Well, let me know once you've switched over. Let me know, everybody. Come on. I mean, today's video was, was so disheartening because I, I spent six or hours and then I redid it and spent another three, nine hours making a video and it just started off. You could tell it was almost out of gas right out of the gate. I mean, it does have a lot of hours of views because everybody who's seeing it seems to watch almost the whole damn thing. 
which is cool. But uh, other than that, uh, man. Well, cool bullet. Yeah, yeah, it probably made some sense. All right, so anyways, let's just get on to that right now. My my blazers right now are just shitty. I mean, what a shitty. I mean, they're just losing games by 30 and 40. I mean, they might even lose tonight by 50-something. I mean, it's just, wow. Well, there you go. See, Christy just fixed hers. Well, who else is going to fix it? Come on, you guys. And welcome Don and Plato, not Play Doh, and Amber Maiden and Nicole B. <laughs> there she is, right there. And also, uh, right, wow, so all of you guys had it like that, huh? Maybe I need to do that more often. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to put that in my videos on this case. I'm going to put it out there so when there's, like, you know, I get 8,000 views. That might actually make a dent in this thing. Like, I'll put that little animation at the beginning. Now, listen, everybody. If you're not subscribed to my channel, and even if you are, this is what you need to have if you actually want to get notified to watch my videos. And then show the little animation, and then people might go, oh, crap, you know? Wow, so put a 1 if right now you just fixed it where it wasn't set that way. I want to see this. <laughs> this is wild. Out of 292 people. Let's see. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, uh, 7, 7. Even you, Tina? <laughs> Even though I've gone over that like a hundred times. Um, Al, Arm. Yeah, look at all these. Man, that's, that's pretty cool in a way, but it's also crappy. Well, uh, thanks, Amber A. Do we need to read this? Will you read this the wrong way? Um, no. Other than, here we go again. <laughs> Jesus. It doesn't say anything. If you went like this, hey, Gray, how's it going? Will you read this the wrong way? Then it would have been funny. Instead, it's just, will you read this wrong, the wrong way? As if that was the only thing that you were thinking about. So, yes, I read it the wrong way. Uh, oh, you didn't get it? Get what? I don't know what the, the get is. Yeah, I guess you're right. I didn't get it. I get the part about, will you get this the wrong way? Because that's what we were talking about the other day. Well, it, it is kind of funny. It's just that you left out the part where you say something just obviously nice, and then uh, I, you would say, did you misread that? There was, no, there was no message that I read the wrong way, you know what I mean? Other than that, ah, oh, forget it. What are they looking at? Oh, it might be the fly. Oh wait, I gotta switch this around. That was from yesterday's show combined. Look at that. Uh, Stream Labs. I gotta set it up. What are we at right now? We're at 109. Just a second. I gotta fix that one. All widgets. And we are at 109.99. Oh one thirteen twenty twenty four. There we go. Not sure why that says eleven there, but oh wait. No? Well I said it right. Oh, it's weird. If there's like a highlight thing that's not working correctly because on my I can see it over here. Weird. Don't know, but it is there. It is there. Uh, 
So here is the uh, the 3D model, and I thought maybe later, like people could call in and say, "Yeah, no, I think it's right over here," and we can move things around the way you want it to be. Now uh, we know uh, the thing is about the bed here. I had it here originally, and then somebody goes, "No, it's against this wall," and then I move it back, and I keep moving it back and back and back. We don't really know exactly where it was but we do have we do know that there's some pictures of the um, blood on a mattress right so that was a good point somebody made and when there's this big mattress that was put on to the truck that you could see blood through the plastic that's going to be Xana's right because Madison's bed is small it's little you know it's like a little bed Uh, what are you talking about? What was wrong with the... It's not a monologue, Johnny. <laughs> it's just hanging out before the show, you know, letting people show up. <laughs> God, people are so dumb. It's weird. Uh, just shooting the breeze, you know. Yeah, I don't think there's ever going to be a, a, a time where I don't get trolls that show up on my show. Uh, they're just... They... That's just what they do. They don't, they don't have their own life to deal with, so they try to ruin somebody else's. That's all they do. And, um, yeah, that's what happens here. <laughs> it's just every day. It's, it's just there isn't really a peaceful day where I get to just do a show, you know. And that's kind of why I talk about sometimes when I make the videos, it's, it's so much more peaceful. You know, I make a video and I put it out there and sure there's comments saying, oh, you got this wrong, you got that. But it's just, that's okay, you know. Uh, but when I do these, and you, you know, I've talked to other people about it, but you can see it dramatically affects what you guys do in, ter in terms of supporting the channel. I mean, it's just, it's wild. Like if it was, you know, like for example, Scouting Dude right there, if he wasn't in here, we'd be at this really low uh, you know, start again, and that's just sort of the weirdness about it. I just want to do shows and have you guys be happy, and we're all on the same page again like we used to be, but it doesn't really feel like that, and I don't know. So, and when you get the trolls showing up, it just <laughs> absolutely um, sucks, right? So, when you see them, I mean, you got them really quick that time, but like, let's just. I don't really know how to get rid of them, right? I don't know how to do it. I mean, these people have actually called up people I donate money to and family members that I work with because it makes them feel happy to try to make me look really shitty for absolutely no reason to charities and family members, right? And I, I, I don't want to, <laughs> you know... And I, you know what I'm sick of, though, is talking about all of this myself. I just want to do the effing show, okay? <sighs> Unbelievable. Um, anyways, so uh, I think what we can do is pull out the uh, probable cause document again. Yeah. Pull out a different one here. Hey, thank you. Tommy Lee. Are you THE Tommy Lee? <laughs> well, yes I am, Gray. Yeah. Uh, you've been uh, so accurate, Gray, in this case. It was 
if I was an investigator, I would wonder. Yeah. Well, the thing is, I feel like I'm doing, I'm literally probably one of just a few people that, uh, that is covering this case in an accurate way where you, you know, you're reasonably speculating, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. All right. So this is the way the door opens. Now, when I did the video today, I was just trying to get you to see in the door. So I just kind of rotated it out of the way. Like, I think I went like, th you know, oh, shit, I can't even, uh, I think it was, what do I have it on? I think it needs to be world or something. Well, that doesn't work. There you go. So I might have opened it like this just so you could see in there. I wasn't thinking, oh, boy, man, I, if I open it that way, it's really going to cause somebody, you know, people to go um, apoplectic seizures or something. I, you know, uh, it's just, it is what it is. It's not a big deal, you know. It just, I have it, the hinges correctly. You see how the hinges are on this side? That means it opens up into the room over here. But, man, this door is really hard to grab the access access -y on yeah look at that it's really usually really simple I wonder if it's because it's so big there we go Yeah, so when I was talking, you know, there's people talking uh, under the video and they were mentioning how, um, you know, there, the blood obviously comes out here. This is what I was saying, too. And I don't know. There, there's stuff that doesn't make sense is how an article and some of the people early on said, oh, you can see Ethan in the doorway. But was that really ever Ethan? Well, thanks, Bullet. Was it ever really Ethan at that point? I mean, just wondering if people just got it wrong. Because how could it be when Officer Payne gets there, he only sees from the hallway, you know, so he's over. Let's get the uh, camera shot here. Coming up the stairs. So right here, he's, he's right here and he sees her on the ground. You know, like that's how it would probably be, something like that, right? And doesn't it make sense now that Ethan's on the bed? And he almost has to be on the bed because the, there's a big uh, blood stain on the mattress. And the only mattress that's large that has a blood stain is Zana's bed because Madison Mogan's bed was a twin bed, like a really small but look at that right there. You come down the hallway and you can see Xana Kernodal on the ground, right? And then maybe, look at that. So you come into the room and there is Ethan lying on the bed. And maybe that's where he bled out and then the blood drips down the side of the, the bed there and then comes out of the house right over in this area. Doesn't that make sense? Yeah. You know, maybe he's a little bit a, more. It could have been like that, kind of trying to... So it's almost the reverse of one of my uh, videos that I had a while ago where Xana is on the bed backing up as Koberger comes in. Remember that one? That was in Nine Minutes of Hell. Hey, thanks, Mama457 Rose. But uh, by the way, how many of you want to watch the, uh, I'm going to speed it up to Michelle Traconis, but I'll use the maps and everything, and, and I'll just get rid of all the sort of mundane, sort of boring, uh, crappy conversations that are going on. Often, like, the attorney for Michelle is like, oh, well, how come they could just say, it's just boring, man. I, I'm going to get rid of that stuff. I just want to see the factual information in the case. And get, you know what's the weirdest thing ever, you guys? Have you ever heard of a case that doesn't have an opening argument in a, in a case like this? They didn't even have an opening argument by either side. The judge just sort of read what the charges were. <laughs> it's just weird. 
You know, um, never heard of that. I have gray. I watched this one time when. Yeah, it's just really it's strange. All right, let, let's just start. Let's read the exhibit A through to the point where they start talking about like all the way down until after Dylan this whole Dylan Mortensen segment so even right down to here I'd say right here so we'll just read down to this page right there starting from up here we might I might start a little bit lower than you know when he starts making his way into the house I guess that's right here. I don't know. Cases that have grand juries always have opening and closing arguments that I've seen. Anyways, right here it says, OFC Smith and I entered King Road residence through the bottom floor door on the north side of the building. OFC Smith and I, and I is Officer Payne, then walked upstairs to the second floor. So he was on the second floor. So, we, I mean, I guess, I, let me just keep this over here. You don't need to see it. So I'm, I'll show you exactly what Officer Payne did. So that's basically what I, what I have here is once he gets upstairs, he goes like this. This is exactly what Officer Payne's doing. He comes up and then he probably didn't walk that wide out there. But, uh, you know, then heads down the hallway and looking from his face, it's like this. So it says, um, let's see. OFC Smith directed me down the hallway to the west bedroom on the second floor, which I later learned through Zana, Zana's uh, driver's license and other personal belongings found in the room was Zana Kernodal's, hereafter Kernodal's room. Just before this room, there was a bathroom door, and that's right here. This is a bathroom. I'm, I'm wondering why they mentioned that. You know, there's people in the comments sections that uh, seem to suggest that maybe one of Zana or Ethan were in the bathroom while one of them was being attacked and then came out and then got attacked themselves. You know, it's always interesting when they mention that. They do mention the bathroom also upstairs, but that one seems to be more for, like, auditory, uh, auditory reasons. Like, there's a room, a bathroom that's a buffer to Madison's room. That's why the 1112 King Road camera didn't pick up that audio. Well, thanks, Valerie. Yes, hit the subscribe button and... All videos. Well, good for you, Michelle. You did it. You nailed it. All right. Uh, let's see. As, as I approached the room, I could see a body later identified as Kernodal. So look at this. Doesn't this seem like exactly what you'd see? Just before this room, there was a bathroom door to the south wall. As I approached the room, I could see Kernodal. Hereafter, uh, Kernodal laying on the floor. Kernodal was deceased with wounds which appear to have been caused by an edge weapon. Also in the room was a male, later identified as Ethan Chapin. And that door shuts too early, but yeah, right there, there you go. Oh. Chapin was also deceased with wounds later determined uh, in the autopsy by sharp force injuries. I then followed OFC Smith upstairs to the third floor. So he's in this room, right? I mean, look at this, how this works right here. I think I messed up on, let me, let me fix my, uh, before we get out of here, I, gotta, I don't like having the door not synced up the way it's supposed to be, hold on. So that, the door from here needs to be, there we go, like that. And then I think when this guy walks in, yeah, see how it opens up, but it shuts. Wow, that's weird. I wonder why it does that. Yeah, there we go. So now that should work pretty good. Hey, thank you so much, Don. 
So this is what o Officer Payne was doing. So now the door opens too early, but yeah, it's right there. And then that's uh, Mattis, uh, that's uh, Dylan Mortensen's room right there where her, she would have been standing right here if this was Koberger. Except I do go in here. He didn't do this. Officer Payne. He then goes up the stairs and then we, we read through this. It says, I then followed OFC Smith upstairs to the third floor of the residence. The third floor consisted of two bedrooms and one bathroom. The bedroom on the west side of the floor was later determined to be Kaylee Gonzalez, hereafter Gonzalez's room. I later learned from review of Officer Nunez's body camera, there was a dog in the room when Moscow police officers initially responded. The dog belonged to Gonzalez and her ex-boyfriend, Jack DeCour. Thank you, dog. So this is in Kaylee's room, right? So he goes into this room here. And then there's a dog right there. I later learned, so he went into Kaylee's room, the bedroom on the west of the floor. I guess he didn't go into Kaylee's room. Um, it sounds like he he's just explaining where her room was. The bedroom on the west side of the floor was later determined to be Kaylee Gonzalez. Uh, I later learned from officer a review of Officer Nunez's body camera there was a dog in the room when Moscow police officers initially responded. So it probably wasn't there anymore, but... When they first got <coughs> got there at around noon, uh, you know that's when there. W I wonder if things had been moved around by the time Officer Payne got there. Maybe that. Maybe originally. I mean, I don't know. If, you know, God, my nose is bugging me. Uh, maybe originally that's when you know Ethan. I don't know. You wouldn't move Ethan from the doorway up to the bed. That's ridiculous. Oh, jeez. Uh, let's see. The dog belonged to Gonzalez and her ex-boyfriend, Jack DeCour. I found out from my interview with Jack on November 13th that he and Gonzalez shared the dog. O.F.C. Smith then pointed out a small bathroom on the east side of the third floor. This bathroom shared a wall with Madison Mogan, hereafter Mogan, uh, her bedroom, which was situated on the southeast corner of the third floor. So after you leave here, there's a bathroom right there. If you look up in the air, how what this looks like. I don't have fixtures in the bathroom. It wasn't really vital for anything it, at this point. And so that's why Kaylee's room is so much bigger. You know, like if you extended this over here, her room would be bigger if this was all part of the room. But her room is small because there's a bathroom here. And that that's, that is outside. There's a window right there. And then right over, right around in um, this area right here is 1112 King Road, 50 feet from this wall here, apparently. I think, I think it's more like 60 feet. But this wall right here, and this wall here probably block any audio that you might have heard coming from this room right here. Hey, welcome, Audrey Kasum, or is it Kasum? Like Casey Kasum? Or? Yeah, he might have checked that room. I mean, we don't really know, but. But I think he was watching. You know, like I said before, if you look at this video right here, again, this is my 360 degree video that I did out there. And you can see how, how steep the hills are. But see this right there? That's Madison Mogan's bedroom window, right there. And I, th I think, if you look right here, if he was parked right around in this area, if you go all the way to the top, Look how right up here you can still see right into her room. Now I imagine um, way over here in one of these other spots you might be able to see into the uh, 
you know, see in the room from maybe over back over here somewhere, see into Kaylee's room. But I, if I was the killer, though, I would want the to park where I have a straight shot out. Like I can get into the vehicle and get the hell out of there right away. If you're parked in that back parking lot over here, you know, you have to back up, try to negotiate out. If you're right here, I mean, you're just boom, like a jet out of there. You know, that's why he's heading out at a high rate of speed. However, this spot back here gives you a little bit more coverage hiding, you know, if people came by and saw you, right? Oh, look at that. <laughs> look at that. That's wild. I forgot I had that other camera. So at the top of the stairs, exit Kaylee's room, and now the bathroom and Madison Mogan's bedroom. All right, this bathroom shared a wall with Madison Mogan, hereafter Mogan. As I entered the bedroom, I could see two females in the single bed in the room. So you come in, and then right there, there there's two, two girls in the single bed. I also later noticed what appeared to be a tan leather knife sheath um, li uh, laying on the bed next to Mogan's right side when viewed from the door. The sheath was later processed and had K-Bar, USMC, and the United States Marine Corps Eagle Globe and Anchor Insignia stamped on the outside of it. The Idaho State Lab later located a single source of male DNA left on the button snap of the knife sheath. So right here, I mean, I can change the camera here. Um, let's see, where is it? Oh, my dummy here, ding. Hip bone, abdomen, chest. Oh, crap, what in the hell happened there? And then neck, head, and then I have the camera attached to this guy's head. And then if I go over here, now oh, that makes it weird though. 15 millimeter. Yeah, that's probably about all I can do without it just way distorting the whole thing. But right underneath this quilt there, I think, is where the knife sheath was, right there. And then they're both found, and I think it's just like this. I think Steve Gonzalez said that his daughter was trapped against the wall and was on the bed, right? So the thing is, is so that means she's over here, and I didn't figure it out that way, though. I think uh, Madison's here because he said the knife sheath was on the right side of Madison Mogan's body, and any other positioning of her with the knife sheath on her right side, you would refer to something else as well. You would say, oh yeah, her, the knife sheath was between Madison Mogan's body and the wall if she was laying on her back where Kaylee Gonzalez is. If she was laying on her stomach where Kaylee Gonzalez is, they would say the knife sheath was found between Madison Mogan and Kaylee Gonzalez. So just based on the wording in the probable cause document, uh, that's how I think they're laid out on the bed. and. Steve Gonzalez seemed to confirm that when he said that she was between the wall and uh, like she was trapped on there. Yeah, she was just trying to reach Jack because, uh, you know, she was drunk and they've been dating and, you know, it had nothing to do with some intruder in the house. Brian Koberger wasn't around until. 331 on his first loop. Those phone calls that Madison and Kaylee made were at, you know, 245-ish, you know, to 3 o'clock in the morning. So they're not, uh, it's not associated with that whatsoever. At originally, we didn't know anything about any timing or anything. And so, um, no, she couldn't have been face up.
American lady. I just explained why. If she was face up, uh, oh, you mean Kaylee? Yeah, she could be any direction. I just have her. I thought you were talking about Madison. <coughs> I don't know why you said Kaylee. <laughs> but yeah, she could be face up. Um, I'm just saying they're positioned like this on the bed. Whether they're face or whether Kaylee's face up or down, I have no idea. There's no way to know. But yeah, I mean, if she was defending herself. Maybe she just fell back over. But a lot of times people curl up like that. And if ju if you're just getting here, I, it turns out that only 19% of you have, out of all my subscribers, have all no the notifications for all videos. So if you go check out there and you un you have to unsubscribe and then subscribe again and make sure you click on all videos. And I think that'll help uh, get a lot more views on my videos and you won't miss them. Because I know that a lot of you don't even see some of my videos uh, based on the comments that you make in the uh, comments. Like, oh, I didn't see that one. Oh, really? Wow, I spent hours on that one. You'd think it would go out to all of the channel members. Yeah, it's going to be brutal. Uh, whatever the jury has to see in this one. All right. So this is just stuff I'm reading. You know, this isn't really related to, like, sequencing or anything like that. Hey, Melissa, thanks for subscribing. Make sure to hit that uh, all videos. <coughs> well, cool, Kelly. There you go. Boom. I'm going to have, have to start doing this on every show just to catch uh, some people that haven't done it yet and also if you guys could help out when I put a video out if you could go share it somewhere uh, maybe in a true crime group somewhere or just anywhere uh, I'd appreciate it and make sure to hit that like button that still seems to be one of the biggest issues that people just other uh, youtubers I see them have their viewers sort of trained to hit the like button every single time because some of the videos that they like are so shitty that you wonder how in the hell that he could get 3,000 likes on something that that bad so they must be trained some way almost, almost like a trained uh, monkey with tambourines I mean it's uh, but really what I want you to do is just come in hit the like button and I'll tell you what if you don't like it after that hit the unlike all right by hitting it again Yeah, you know. <laughs> I thought that was pretty funny too. Uh, Zoe four one three didn't get it. Didn't get quite the chuckles that I was looking for. But well, you should share in like bigger groups. That'd be better. Okay, uh, let's see. King Road residence, time of the homicides, and we're roommates to victims, Funk. As part of the investigation, numerous interviews were conducted by Moscow Police Department. Two of the interviews included Bethany Funk and Dylan Mortensen, who, by the way, I'm breaking news right now, everybody. They have absolutely nothing to do with the murders. All right, I know everybody wants to know why did it take so long. But I think when you go to bed at four something in the morning and you lock your door, it's not really that weird that you might finally go to sleep, not really wanting to see, you just kind of hide, and, and eight hours later you wake up. And even if there is an explanation and, and it doesn't satisfactory for you, it doesn't mean anything. You don't need to have a perfect answer. They have absolutely nothing to do with the murders. In fact, I, I, I wouldn't be shocked at all if they were going to be one of the victims. I wouldn't be shocked at all. I think it's very possible that the original... Uh, you know, I, I think Madison... My, my opinion is Madison Mogan is the target or was the one that led him to want to go there. But he may have decided he was going to kill everybody in, in the house and things just went awry, don't you guys? I mean, doesn't it feel like things didn't go quite right? 
you know, you have Kaylee in the same bed. Well, that wasn't going to be right. He thought maybe they'd all be in their own room if he even thought Kaylee was going to be there at all. He thought they'd be in their own room and she'd be sleeping. And so he would have just easy work going in there. Instead, he goes in there and he attacks Madison. Oh, my God. Then Kaylee gets up and then they fight for a little bit. And then, then he goes downstairs, and but that alerted maybe somebody go, hey, somebody's here, you know, somebody's here. And then other things started happening at that point. You know, like, oh, wow, he, things got thrown off. Maybe uh, Xana comes out and is like, hey, who, you know, somebody's here. And that's right when Koberger, maybe it's coming down the stairs at like, let's say it's 413 or something at that time, just after Kaylee was on TikTok. And then Koberger comes down the stairs and sees her and she sees him. And now, you know, she was part of the plan anyways, but now he's going right in there. And when he goes in there, well, holy crap, there's Ethan, you know. And then it just, there's a lot of noise going on, dogs barking, and he gets the hell out of there. And he isn't really looking for any more victims at this point. Yeah. So anyways, based on numerous interviews conducted by MPD officers, ISP detectives, and FBI agents, as well as my review of evidence, I have learned the following. On the evening of, no of November 12, 2022, Chapin and Carnotal are seen by Funk at the Sigma Chi house. Let me, I, I got a cool video for that one. Hold on a second. Ding, 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 ding. Okay. Yeah, that was a the drone footage. That would have been is it this one? Yeah, I think this might be it. Oops. Oh crap. Yeah, this would be another ten seconds or twenty seconds here. I'm gonna reopen up my ominous impact. Prelude song, and then get back to the that same footage and open it up with VLC player. Now oh, this is when I walked around there. Okay, that's not the one. That was a cool one, though, too. I think this is it. That's the one right there. Look at look how awesome that shot is right there. I mean, that's an amazing... If, if you're somebody that has been following the case like I am in terms of what was going on in this area... I, that one's great, and then if I had rotated to the right a little bit, it would have been awesome too. But this shot right here shows you basically everything you almost need to know. If I was just back maybe 50 feet back and then out, it would have been perfect. But see, that's Sigma Chi right over here. So can you guys all see how now it's just like, oh, wow, that's just across the street. It's really close. It's right here. That's Sigma Chi up in the top here. And then this is King Road, and this is Queen Road. All right? And if you're just getting here, if you're out there, everybody, and you can help support the Gray Hughes Investigates YouTube channel, it allows me to keep doing these shows on a daily basis. And uh, also we do a lot of great work with a large portion of the income. All right. So if you can afford it and you want to help uh, allow me to keep doing this, I would appreciate it. Uh, a lot of people go, gosh, Gray, why do you ask? Uh, I, I'm just trying to raise funds for the channel, everybody. I'm trying to raise funds for the channel. If you don't want to help support it, then you don't, um, you know, you don't have to. There isn't really, you know, you can hit the like button for me, though. That'd be great. All right, so you look at this one, and now we'll read the probable cause document. 
where we were here. Let's see. Let me go back to the... I think you can see better on this one. So on the evening of November 12th, 2022, Chapin and Kernodal are seen by Funk at the Sigma Chi house at the University of Idaho campus, right over here. At 7.35 Ness Purse Drive from approximately 9 p.m. on November 12th uh, to, let's see, November 12th to about 1.45 a.m. on November 13th. So there was 1.45 a.m. when they were at there and, they, and then they went home. So Funk also estimated that at approximately 1.45 a.m. Chapin and Kernodal returned to the King Road residence. I mean, it would only take probably three or four minutes to get from Sigma Chi back over to home walking. Uh, Funk also stated that Chapin did not live in the King Road residence, but was a guest of Kernodal because they were dating. Gonzalez and Mogan were at a local bar, the Corner Club, at 202 North Main Street in Moscow. Gonzalez and Mogan can be seen on video footage provided by the Corner Club between 10 p.m. on November 12th and 1.30 a.m. on November 13th. Yeah. So, you know, I'm not going to show where the corner club is downtown. It's not really relevant. And then they went to the grub truck at, um, you know, a little after 1.30, Madison and Kaylee did. They were both uh, intoxicated. And then uh, that was at 318 Main Street. And then they got a ride home. And they got home around 1.56 or 2 in the morning. And we also know that uh, Kaylee and Madison called... Kaylee called multiple times to her boyfriend, and then Madison called. So that's what usually what you do when you think, hey, if you call, maybe you'll answer. And then Kaylee called another time, and he never answered. And that was like, if I remember right, like around 2.45-ish or something. Mortensen and Funk both made statements during interviews that indicated that the occupants of the King Road residence were at home by 2 a.m. and asleep or at least in their rooms by approximately 4 a.m. This is with the exception of Kernodal, who received a DoorDash order at the residence at approximately 4 a.m. Law enforcement identified the DoorDash delivery driver who reported this information. Mortensen stated she originally went to sleep in her bedroom on the southeast side of the second floor. All right, so now we can go back to the model here. And we can also use this, this thing too. Hold on. Oh, it's still playing there. Just a second. Oh, there it is, right there. So this down here is Dylan Mortensen's room. See that um, this wooden plank right here? That's Bill Mortensen's bedroom right there. I don't know, Kelly. What, what difference does it make? All right. Why, why does it matter how much food she ate? I mean, they might be able to determine, determine, you know, when her death was based on that. But I mean, I, when you say how much did she eat, uh, we, we don't get to know that. How would we possibly be able to know the answer to that question? I'm just wondering. <laughs> Come on, Kelly. What, how would we know the answer to how much of her DoorDash did she eat? I have no idea. Um, hello. What does that mean? Another old GHI freak. I don't know what that means. Who 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 are you? Do I know you? You're not a channel member, so. Right, if, if, yeah, right, I mean, if you, if she got her DoorDash delivery, which is probably, you know, going to be around between 4 and 4.08, I would imagine, they, she got her DoorDash delivery, and maybe she had a few bites of something, and then you'd be able to tell how digested it was. I, if, it probably is almost zero digestion on it, 
because apparently digestion stops the moment you're you're killed. No, Rebecca and oh yeah, I remember that. I haven't seen you in a long time. But uh let's see. My door to my public service announcement fizzled out. It wasn't enough time to digest and Right, it would have almost no digestion, I just said, Danielle. I don't know if you were listening or not, but I just said that exact sentence. Um, all right, so let me go back to the, this is Madison, this is um, Dylan Mortensen's room right down here, okay? And so her room is in a crazy spot, like you could literally hear almost anything in this house. So her room is right there. <laughs> I mean, it's just, here's the living room, and I mean, I wonder if there's a way. I think I can probably. Let's see what happens if I go like this. I think I have it connected. Uh, I could probably just delete that for a second. Now oh, that didn't work. Yeah, I'm not going to do that. But anyways, it's right there, and it's on the camera too. The head camera shot. So here's the living room area, and it's just right here. That's her room, okay? That's Dylan Mortensen. Here's the steps right there. Those steps are what Koberger went up to kill Madison Mogan and Kaylee Gonzalez. Yeah, I still have that music. So uh, what it says here is uh, Mortensen, Mortensen stated she originally went to sleep in her bedroom on the southeast side of the second floor. Uh, let's see. Hey, thanks, Augie. I said there was somebody in that. Mortensen stated she originally went to sleep And so she's right here. This is ba this is the view from her room. There's the kitchen, and just to the right is the living room. And I can show you again from the top view. You can probably see the camera. There it is. See, that's the character that I have moving around. That's where it is, see? And then just down that hall there is the kitchen, which is right here. See, there's the living room you can see right through there. It's, just, it's a small house, everybody. This isn't a big house. I, I don't care what the coroner says. This is a really, really, really small house. It just has a lot of different rooms in it. That's it. I mean, this is, it's not, the only thing that's somewhat big is the living room, but that's not even really that big. I think it's something like, what is it, 1,600 square feet? I mean, my house is smaller than that, but I mean, in terms of a house that's three floors with, uh, five or six people living in it. Hey, thanks, Augie and Jessica Schubach. Yeah, it's very, I think like Plato said, it's like a fishbowl in there, you know. So that we're right now we're in sort of the timing portion. Hey, thanks, Amber Maiden. Trying to get a wave going. DoorDash order. Okay, Mortensen. Ah, that's. I got to go back to the DoorDash. Mortensen and Funk both made statements during interviews that it indicated occupants of the King Road residence were at home by 2 a.m. Everybody was, and asleep or at least in their rooms by 4 a.m. So now that's sort of interesting. Like, what were they all doing before that? You know, just hanging out, probably talking, maybe hang out in the living room, watching TV. Who the hell knows, right? Uh, but this is it with the exception of Kernodal, who received a DoorDash order. So at 4 a.m., they were all in their rooms. Uh, but this was the exception of, of Kernodal, they say. And she received a DoorDash at the residence at approximately 4 a.m. And law enforcement identified the DoorDash delivery driver who reported this information. 
So that's not Brian Koberger, everybody. All right, now, guess why that's not Brian Koberger? Like, read that statement there, and why isn't that Brian Koberger? We still hear that all the time. Oh, the DoorDash guy, that's Brian Koberger. Why isn't that him? Uh, reading that sentence right there, especially the one in parentheses. Hey, come on, don't let Amber Maiden down, you guys. Every time she tries one of these waves, it falls on deaf ears, much like when I do my public service announcement. <laughs> Look at that, you made her have a sad face. Wave anyone? Ray has been working hard for us. Ocean wave, ocean wave. No, what is it in this st uh, statement there that you just know for certain that he, that it's not him? Yeah, it's part of that, Olivia, but it's really the re the ending part of it. Why would Brian Koberger report that he's the DoorDash driver, knowing what happened there? I mean, look at that. Law enforcement identified the DoorDash delivery driver who reported this information. So the DoorDash driver called them and said, hey, yeah, I was there. You think Brian Koberger is going to do that? <laughs> I mean, there's no way, man. There's no way in hell he would do that. Well, thanks for the effort there, Amber. I appreciate it. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Mortensen stated she originally went to sleep in her room on the southeast side of the second floor. Mortensen stated she was awoken at approximately 4 a.m. And it's also, I, think, I mean, the main point is, is that they identified this person and it wasn't Brian Koberger. If it was, wouldn't they say that in this document? We identified the DoorDash driver, and it, it was a man named Brian Koberger, who later became the suspect, and, you know, you would word it like that. It, it doesn't, it, you're not, not keeping us safe, uh, another old GHI freak. I, just trust me on that. All right. Mortensen stated she originally went to sleep in her bedroom on the southeast side of the second floor. Mortensen stated she was awoken approximately 4 a.m. by what she stated sounded like Gonzalez playing with their dog. So it was approximately 4 a.m. I think that's more like 4.09 or 4.10, which is, you know, around 4 o'clock, right? You know, she's not sitting there staring at her clock. It's just sort of like, yeah, that was around 4, if I remember right. She said it sounded like Gonzalez playing with her dog. And see, I think that that's when Koberger was attacking them upstairs. He went upstairs, that sound probably like, hey, like somebody jumping around playing with a dog, but it was really both of them fighting for their life. Uh, Mad I don't think Madison Mogan was ever really awake. You know, there might have just been a moment where, you know, once she was first attacked that she kind of woke up, but then. And then Kaylee sort of got up, but she's not screaming because she's just like, what's going on? And then she's fighting, and then she's getting stabbed, too. There isn't any going to be any sound. So it sort of just sounds like somebody playing with a dog up there. Thank you, Sirius Black. And another old GHI freak. Yeah, you don't have to worry about becoming a member and uh, protecting anybody. It doesn't. Uh, I already get so much garbage <laughs> out here from the trolls on social media. They're just embarrassing people, you know. And But they think they're doing so great because they're all brainwashed wackos. But anyways, thank you, Mama457 Rose, writing Amber's. Hey, look at Amber. Look at that. Amber's wave of gray. <laughs> Amber's wave of gray. Yeah, you look at you did it, man. No, they never said that either. Scott did, did they? Never said that one time. Mortensen stated she originally went to sleep in her bedroom on the southeast side. Yeah, so we already did that part. A review of records obtained. Uh, well, hold on, we're missing that one point that's important here. So let's just do this whole paragraph again. Mortensen stated she originally went to sleep in her bedroom on the southeast side of the second floor. Mortensen stated she 
She was awoken at approximately 4 a.m., but we gotta do the taco dance. Crime to the sector, the projector, I'm a certified evil eye detector, gonna get ya, gonna set ya, even try and play like an old projector. Crime checker is my nectar, professor Gray's gonna be an electric crime collector, freak connector, and I'm always gonna be a pop protector, fool deflector, interceptor, and I'm an inspector with a vector on his vector with a vector. Not bad, huh? <laughs> Gosh, Gray, why do you have to have that music playing, you bastard? Alright. Right, so she originally went to sleep at 4 a.m. Everybody was in bed. Um, but she said she was woken up by at 4 a.m. by what she stated sounded like Gonzalez playing with their dog in one of the upstairs bedrooms which was located on the third floor now, as i said a minute ago i think that's when koberger was attacking i think it was more like 409 now when people go how do you know it's 409 Greg? why wasn't it like 402 that means you haven't watched the videos i the videos that i've put out recently um are 100 percent accurate in terms of what the white elantra was doing now I mean in that right there in the area the loop that I have it go on I don't know a hundred percent but I'm pretty sure that this is how he would go around just like this on this green line and around on one of the passes he drew drove further away and perhaps was at this Exxon gas station because if you watched one of my shows the other day on the third loop if he didn't stop uh, right here, like he probably did on all the other ones. Let me get to a better map than that. That, that one sucks, too. Let's see. That one's okay. Yeah, so right here, I have him stopping for three minutes on each of the first two loops. Then on the third loop, he drives around, and he's probably getting frustrated because now it is, it's 3.38, and they're still moving around. He's like, God, the lights are on. Jesus, man, I need to kill time. So he takes off and he does the same thing here. But instead, when he gets to here, he takes a right. And we timed this out. I drove this exact route. And guess what? Right when I got to the Exxon gas station here, it was 2.45. A, or not 2.45. It was 3.45 in the morning. And it went like that. Boom. Right? It was 3.45, I think, is the time. No, wait, excuse me. Uh, wait, hold on. Why am I 3.45? Yeah, 3.45. Now, now uh, I, I don't know if I wrote this wrong or not. If it turns out that that's 245, then that's just a coincidence that it's a 45. And I'm pretty sure that was supposed to be 345. But if you find that that says 245, then that's unrelated to the case, okay? Because he was the white Elantra that he was driving was uh, 244 was right here and turned his phone off at 247. So that it's impossible that that could be his white Elantra. Um, let me see if I can find that really quick just to, let's see, uh, Koberger, White, Elantra, uh, let's see, gas station, I think that'll pop up here, yeah, there it is right there, let me just see what this says. Where's the time on that? God. It's in there a million times, though. Shoot. Yeah, I've seen that before, but now it's, I'm struggling with the... Maybe I'll just pick one of these. Let's see. How about this one? Yep, right there. It's 345. Okay. So I just have it miswritten on here. So how, how amazing is that, you guys? I mean, you have to admit that that is incredible that if you are right here and you, you don't stop this time, you just take the normal loop and drive around just like this, the same loop he always does. But right here, he takes a right instead and he goes right through this intersection and we timed it out. It was 245, 345 exactly 
right here. Let me rename this so I don't keep saying over and over and over and over and over again. Uh, so this should be 345. And it's perfect. And he gets back at 357. So see how he's killing more time than he comes back again. And I think he came back right on this road again, going, getting right back into his path. And then at 357, he comes around. And guess what? Yeah, we'll, we'll show this in a minute, man. It's just amazing. <laughs> I, I've never been able to figure out where 52 Queen Road was for some reason, but I, I know where it is now. It's right here. All right. I don't know what was why it was not showing up for me before. I might not have had places turned on or whatever. But 52 Queen Road is right here. So keep that in mind. Thanks, Plato. Not Plato, but Plato. As in Socrates. <laughs> it's in Socrates. Oh, that almost deserved a, a rim shot there. Where the hell is that? Oh, yeah. Plato, not Plato, as in Socrates. There you go. But it's Socrates, Gray, not Plato. Why were you saying that like that? Oh, boy. <laughs> Uh, Mortensen stated she looked out of her bedroom but did not see anything when she heard the comment. So let's go back up here. Mortensen stated she originally went to sleep. We already did that part. And they think that it could be Xana on TikTok who said, there's someone here. So it was like at 4 a.m., she stated she heard Gonzalez playing with her dog in one of the upstairs bedrooms, which were located on the third floor and then a short time later okay so maybe this was you know this is sort of sounding like is that you know 409 Koberger goes into the into the uh, house could even be a little bit later but he parked at 408 okay that's when his car parked so at 409 it's possibly put on whatever you wanted to put on and went inside the house at that point and then we hear something that sounds like dogs, you know, playing with the dogs upstairs. So maybe at, that's 410, let's say. And then after that, a short time later, you see, she's on her TikTok. Xana is. And then somebody says, there's someone here. And she thought that sounded like Gonzalez. That's what Dylan said. The police said, though, see, I had a comment in the comment section go, Gray, you always say don't change what the probable cause document says, you bastard. Dylan said it was Kaylee. And I said, yeah, but the next sentence says, a review of records obtained from a forensic download of Kernodal's phone showed that this could have also been Kernodal. As her cellular phone indicated she was likely awake, and using the TikTok app at approximately 4.12. Of course, they always leave that part out when the trolls show up. They never really just think through things a little bit. So right there, it's 4.12. And that could very well be her telling Ethan, hey, you know, there's somebody here. Or just saying out loud, there's somebody here. And then you got people saying, oh, Dylan said, shut up, everybody. Can somebody point me to the document out there? that says that Dylan told everybody to shut up. Can somebody please point at any credible news outlet? Did NBC report that? Or I'm not saying that they're, you know, I don't like any of these guys, but, you know, ABC, you know, Fox News, CNN, any outlet at all out there, did any of them say that uh, Dylan Mortensen told everybody to shut up? Yeah, and you're not going to find that. I, I'm going to tell you right now because it likely didn't ex didn't happen. Well, Gray, that's what she told one of her friends, and then they told us, and then we... Okay, all right. So I guess it's, quote, possible, just like aliens could have done that. I mean, this whole thing. They could have been aliens. We just don't know at this point. We're going to have to check those satellite records at this juncture and see if we can 
track any anomalous space activity during this time, and then we can make a decision on that. Yeah, so it could have been Xana, right? So Mortensen stated she looked out of her bedroom right when that was heard, but did not see anything when she heard the comment about some someone being in the house. So I wonder if it was like, did Xana see the person heading up the stairs even? I mean, that's sort of interesting. Did she see? Because I, I think Koberger might have called off the initial attack on Madison and Kaylee if he was walking up the stairs and heard somebody say, hey, there's somebody here. He wouldn't have felt comfortable. He would have thought, man, they might call 911. You know, I, I'm not going to be up there attacking somebody, right? So you got to look at it like that. He's not, definitely not going to continue his way up the stairs and get into a, you know, start stabbing people when somebody already said that. So to me, it feels like he's, you know, I don't know if she's in the kitchen or what. Like maybe she's in the kitchen with her DoorDash bag and then threw down the hallway. So I guess we could go back to the 3D model now. So that's why these are, it's so valuable to have these. People always make it, oh man, those are bogus, man. They just, no, they're actually pretty uh, valuable to be able to, to look at. So let's say you're in Dylan's room and then you're out. That's what it looks like from the kitchen. So look where the kitchen is and just to the left there's the stairs. So what if uh, Zana is in the kitchen? I'm not sure if I was using the right name a minute ago. But let's say Zana's in the kitchen with their DoorDash delivery and she looks back this way and somebody walks by right here. And then she yells out, uh, louder, you know, maybe he's already walked by. Hey, somebody's here. And I don't know if, uh, see, at that point, it seems like he would turn around and attack her. So would he then then go into Matt, or, uh, Zana's room at that point? See, that doesn't make sense. So wh when do you guys think that Zana, if she's the one that said somebody's here, when do you think that would have been? It doesn't make sense that you saw him going up because he would have called off what he was doing. How do you know, American lady? Where does it say in the documents that she would... Oh, you said she would start screaming. I see. Uh, let's see. Yeah, she would have said, Hey, Ethan, somebody's here because he's heading towards him. Right. Uh, why would she be saying that, though? Somebody's here. I mean, do you think she said somebody's here to Madison? I guess... Let's like revisit that part, part. So let's just say that it really is Madison, or it is um, Kaylee saying there's somebody here. And Koberger gets there at like 4.10. He goes upstairs and says that loud. Hey, somebody's here. And then he kills them. And then that's sort of a, a moot point at that point because maybe Xana didn't even hear it from where she was because uh, the, the way the house is laid out is like this. I think I might agree with you on that one, Cindy. I think I might. Yeah, so let's take a look at this from above. So look at where Dylan is right below Madison's room. <laughs> okay, so Kaylee would be saying this comment. Somebody's here, maybe trying to wake Madison up because she's just out of it. And he might be say, she might be saying that uh, right at the door. I mean, we don't know. Did Koberger bust open that door or not? Did somebody bust open this door right here? Like, hey, somebody's here! You know, something like that. But look where Dylan is, right below there. And Xana's way over here in this corner. So she might not have heard a statement about somebody's here. Hmm, so that's pretty interesting. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, it's, it's one of those hard ones to really figure out because Dylan doesn't have perfect timing. It's like, a little after that, so-and-so said. Maybe it's Kaylee's way of trying to warn everyone else. Maybe, maybe. I mean, she, I mean, there's a lot of people that just show up to that house anyway, so it could just be, hey, somebody's here. And she's right above 
Dylan Mortensen's bedroom. And it says, Mortensen stated she looked out of her bedroom but did not see anything when she heard the comment about someone being in the house. Right, so that would make sense because that means the person is likely already upstairs because if it was Kaylee saying it, then that means, you know, somebody's almost like trying to open their door. You know, he might even be in the room at that point. Hey, somebody's here, you know. I mean, that's kind of creepy if you just picture it like that. That he's in the room, and that's right at around 412, because, or 4, oh, I think it would be more like 410, right? Because it's right when he gets upstairs and goes in. So it's like 410, and then he's spending a couple minutes, he's killing them, and then Xana is in a room at 412, that would be two minutes later, and still using her TikTok. Because they said she was still using her TikTok, and we'll get to that here in a second. Warrenson stated she looked out of her bedroom but did not see anything when she heard the comment about someone being in the house. Mortensen stated she opened the door a second time when she heard what she thought was crying coming from Kernodle's room. Mortensen then said she heard a male voice saying something to the effect of, it's okay, I'm going to help you. Huh. Yeah, so that's kind of interesting too then now. So let's say, uh, let's see, it's four. So 412, he's heading, you know, 412 to 413, just like my video that I've got. The nine minutes of hell. He leaves here at 413 uh, in the morning. He leaves uh, Madison's room. And then he comes downstairs. And let's say he really was there to also kill Xana. And she wasn't really saying anything. And perhaps, wouldn't that be interesting if she was in the kitchen right at that time and it was just um, Ethan in the room and he sees Ethan in there and Ethan sort of mumbles, gets kind of up and boom, he attacks him really quick on the bed. Then, you know, where is he at this point though? See, that, the problem is, is um, <laughs> the issue here is with the it's okay, I'm going to help you. So let's say he's right there on the bed She's back. She's in the kitchen, which is underneath Kaylee's room. It's right down there. So she would come around like this, and then... I mean, what if she was in the bathroom then? You know? Let's say Xana was in the bathroom, and then he comes in here. But then why would she be whimpering, and then you hear, it's okay, I'm going to help you. See, that doesn't make any sense. I could see her whimpering if she saw Ethan, but I think at that point she'd be grabbing her phone and calling 911 or something. The whimpering to me is when she's already been attacked and is injured. Don't you guys think that? Like she's already injured at that point. I don't know. The headlights would be just another car up there, though, Dom. There's a lot of cars that park up there. So I wouldn't think that. She'd have to see somebody literally go down and then maybe go through this, um, you know. I heard somebody, somebody today said that uh, they heard, well, it was, what's his face? Papa Rogers said he went through the sliding glass window there, or the window to the kitchen, and then he exited the house through the sliding glass door. So if that really is um, him, that kind of, you know, makes some sense, right? Like maybe he went through this window because it was unlocked. And then when he left, he just went through the slider because he can unlock it. But yeah, there's a lot of cars that park up there. I don't think she would have thought something about that. Hmm. Man, this has just got really... <laughs> Well, more like a kind of an interesting little puzzle to try to put together. So it says that approximately 4.17 a.m. a security camera located at 1122 King Road 
a residence immediately to the northwest of 1122 King Road picked up distorted audio of what sounded like voices or a whimper followed by a loud thud. All right, so let's get back to this picture. Check this thing out. So this is 1122 King Road right down here. Just right around this corner is the camera that films this direction and showed the white Elantra coming into the area. All right. But that also picked up the audio from what happens. So this must have been a continuously running camera, not one of those motion activated ones. So right over here, there's audio and it's being picked up and it's the, uh, it's at 417 and you can hear a dog barking numerous times. The security camera they say is less than 50 feet from the west wall of Kernodal's bedroom but I think it's further than that. And you might go, gosh, Gray, what are you do saying that you know more than law enforcement? All I can just tell you is Google Earth is really accurate, right? And if you go use the feet measurement here, and let's just say there's a bit of an overhang, even, let's say there's not an overhang. Let's be generous and say that's the edge of the house right there. Then I measure it to, right, here's the steps over here, and I'm gonna put it against the wall there and a little inside of there and that makes it 57.58 feet so I mean it's a little more than 50 feet they said less than 50 feet I don't agree with that um, the reason I, I mean I could measure it again uh, I mean you could see that if you went from right where the camera is right there and stayed below 50 feet let's say you're, you're be right here you know, it's 56, 46, right there is 50, you're not at the wall yet. I know you're just splitting hairs there, but at the same time, I just, you know, I like to check different things. And, you know, 57 feet is, isn't 50, it's not 49, but it's not far either. I'll tell you what, you guys, if we get to uh, 300 on the goal, I'll, get, I'll buy five memberships for people. All right, see if we can do it. We got, uh, what are we at here? We're about an hour and a half in. We, are, we might be able to do it. We might be able to do it. You just never know. Yeah, I know, I've already said that, American Lady. I mean, American Lady just repeated what was on my show. Yeah, so what, what you say is you, um, I mean, that's exactly what I say is he goes back upstairs to look for the sheath, and when he comes back down, here's whimpering, right? On the video that I made earlier, right? So if you see it like uh, right here, you could make a scenario where, uh, let's see. Yeah, so he would have already had to have attacked both of them. I don't think she'd be in the room whimpering, just looking at Ethan, and she's not making phone calls or yelling, going, hey, give me help, Emmy. Whimpering is, like, kind of odd, too, because she's attacked or something. But let's just say, like, both of them were killed, or he thought they were both dead already. Yeah, so I just think it's more simple than what we're... I mean, this was interesting. I, I think this is upstairs. I think Kaylee said somebody's here. Xana didn't hear that part, but Dylan Mortensen did. Then after he killed them, he went down here, and he goes into this room, and it might not have been that they saw anything, that he went in there and he was going to kill Xana also. And when he went into the room, and maybe that's why, wow, man, it makes you start wondering stuff. Maybe that's why he drove around a couple times to look because he could, he saw, okay, the light's on over there. Remember the time he turned around and went back? And maybe he was more interested in also what she was doing. So then after he killed them, he comes down here and then he ends up attacking both of them and killing them, he thought. Then he goes, he was, now he's trying to put his knife away at this point because things are getting loud. He's getting to get out of there and he goes, um, holy crap. Or it wasn't, at that point he wasn't nervous, I guess you could say. And then he He's trying to put his knife in the sheath, but then he goes, well, I don't have my knife sheath. So then he heads upstairs to look for it, and he doesn't find it. And then he comes back downstairs, and he hears whimpering. 
Now he knows that he left uh, a survivor alive that saw him directly. And so he goes in there and says, it's okay, I'm here to help, to try to calm her down. And then he ends up killing her permanently at that point. I mean, I guess that's kind of a dumb way to word it. I mean, when you're killed, it's permanent. It's not like you're... If he came to the second level, Pat, hey, thanks, American Lady and Wise Child and Cindy J. Yeah, so I think the attack in here was just sort of standard. I think it's more likely, interestingly, the reason I have Xana last is because she wasn't dead yet, right? I think she was attacked first in the Ethan Xana portion, all right? So I think what happened was is she was kind of over moving around, milling about. She was awake, and she was like, oh, and... She got attacked and she went on the ground and she's just, you know, very injured. And Ethan likely was still just kind of like groggy, asleep, whatever, and he went over and attacked him. You, you know, logistically, you would think you'd want to attack Ethan first, but I don't know. I, I think, um, you know, she was right there. And I don't think Ethan stood up and it doesn't sound like he had defensive wounds. So he might be on the bed and some of these people that think that it was Ethan in the hallway or in the doorway it was really just Xana they just miss saw it or something well thanks Lissandra I, I try to be a little bit humorous from time to time <laughs> you know so any other uh, takers to help us get up to the the number so then BK says, it's okay, I'm here to help before he kills Xana. No, the second time, the second time. I mean, like, he didn't, he thought she was killed the first time. And when he came back down the stairs after looking for his knife sheath in the scenario where he didn't leave it intentionally, he comes back down and he says, um, and when he hears her whimpering, he says, it's okay, I'm here to help you. And here's the thing, everybody. There's no way in hell Brian Koberger um, is going... I mean, uh, there's no way in hell Ethan Chapin's going to say, It's okay, I'm here to help. Nobody says that to their girlfriend, okay? Picture, if you had a guy that sounded like that, wouldn't you dump him five minutes later? Like you hurt your finger? It's okay, I'm here to help. No, you'd want him to say, Oh, sweetheart, hey, what's going on? Let me help you, you know. It just doesn't, nobody talks like that, okay? <laughs> All right? Uh, well, I, I don't care, American lady, you know? Yeah, uh, let's see. He says, I'm going to help you, not I'm here. Okay, so how do you know Xana was in the bathroom? Mm hmm right. I mean, it's possible. And I said that earlier, that maybe she was in the bathroom because they mentioned the bathroom, but you can't say for sure she was in the bathroom. Hey, thanks, Don. Uh, LOL, holy crap. Think I would Tourette syndrome going on at this point. I think I would Tourette syndrome. <laughs> I don't know what that means. Yeah. Right. Okay. So, But it's hard to disagree. You can't say you, you disagree. You can say... Well, what about this scenario? Because you're just speculating too. Like if you're disagreeing, you would say something like you had the facts and you're nailing it down and you're going to go ahead and stake your claim and we don't really know any of this stuff. No American lady, I'm not going to jail. All right, I'm going to put myself in prison if you're sending me there. <laughs> Scouting dude came on with the Cindy J wave. All right, who's getting me the hell out? Oh, well, you get to look at the dogs. You don't want to get me out of... Look at that. That's a full shot of them. It's perfect. Blue. Look at they Both are in their correct beds and everything. <laughs> they absolutely love those beds, man. And we got the trees gone now and everything. And so who the hell's bailing me out tonight? I feel one had to be right on the stairs and be seen by Brian... Well, what if he went there to kill 
uh, both of them anyways, and it went relatively smoothly upstairs. You know, he, he did have to fight Kaylee, but I think it was quicker than people think it was. And then he goes downstairs, and he's heading over to Xana's room. And then it was the fight with, you know, the not fight, but uh, the attack with Ethan and her, and things got kind of loud, and dogs were barking, and he's like, I gotta get the hell out of here. Can you tell you're making a concerted effort to be... <laughs> well, there you go. Yeah, it's a little bit more uh, fun, you know, Jay. Giving it a shot. <laughs> yeah, it's just been so stressful. And, you know, sort of a... Uh, I was talking to a friend of mine about this, and uh, it's just sort of like uh, the trolls have withered away a lot of the joy that I used to have doing these live streams. Now, they've just... And, and the reason it's withered away is because They've had an effect on other people who don't support the channel anymore, plus the stuff that they do on the side where they call the charities that I donate to and family members, and they do all these things back behind, you know, I mean, just ridiculous things. And so I, uh, the, the friend told me, they said, just realize it's them, not you. And I went, yay, man, that's pretty good. So today I'm trying to have that perspective all right hey thanks uh turtle runner and uh j case but yeah it's been an absolute nightmare you know? i mean look at how they i get pulled over going 36 and a 25 was very polite to the cop but they had to go get a foia request and get the be me being pulled over and then up and upload it to youtube i mean who the hell does that <laughs> think about that you know, I got a lot of subs out of it, but so thank you. But uh, you know, oh, let me get out of. Pre I'll, I think you guys have bailed me out here, right? Maybe J Case. Uh, where are we at? There we go. Oh, I'm bailed out. And we're actually at. Looks like uh, over the. I'm gonna. We got to the number that I said, so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, gift. Five memberships right now, you guys. So hold on. Who's ever out there? Yeah, you don't want to be one. Trust me. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's not cool. Uh, but here we go. I'm going to give away uh, some memberships here. So hold on. And then we'll get right back to what we were doing. I'm going to open the lines up here in a minute. Chewbacca? Uh, uh, I'll chew Chewbacca if you want me to. Me <laughs> too. <laughs> Alright, here we go. Me <laughs> too. Uh oh. Uh oh. Alright, here we go. Me too. I'm just gonna repeat. Uh oh. Uh oh. Jesus. What's it? Why is it playing twice? Jesus. Alright. Membership gifting. And here we go. All right, here we go. They're going to be coming out here. Let's see who get them. Let's see who got them. Let's see who got them. We gave them to CJ. I thought you already were one. And then John... Michael and Terry S and Kathy B58 and Gloria 2730. Unfortunately, you guys want to hear something also disgusting? We have trolls that show up and make themselves available for membership gifting, taking them for otherwise people who couldn't afford it. Isn't that great? My speculation, I think Xana was startled by hearing the murders upstairs. She encountered him on the stairway. He chased her into the room, part one. Yeah, I mean, that's one that we've talked about before, something like that. You know, like somebody's here, she's saying, and that, that works perfect on that one. So that one works, the one that uh, 
You know, because that doesn't, um, there's nobody mentioned that she was running, but nobody said she, there wasn't that sound. You wouldn't be talking either. Uh, so she says, hey, there's somebody here after, you know, she hears somebody upstairs, maybe even making noises or something, you know, with, and then the person comes downstairs, sees her, and now he has to kill her because he, she sees him, chases them to the room over here, right? So it chases right into the room, and then um, he likely, you know, attacks her first. But the problem with that is, is she had defensive wounds. So that means it's more likely that Ethan would have woken up and also had defensive wounds. But it almost feels like he was killed while he was sleeping. And then somehow Xana got attacked first. So I kind of like, you know, American ladies... Um, idea of her being in the bathroom and he kills Ethan in there and then when he's exiting she comes he comes out oh and then you know and then he attacks her really quick and he thinks they're both dead Ethan's on the bed and I think Anna was startled by hearing the murders upstairs she encountered him in the stairway he chases her into the room part one slash X stabs her and stabs her stabs Ethan Ethan never got out of bed because he was stabbed in the throat. Then Koberger goes back upstairs to retrieve the knife sheath. Yeah, here's Anna whimpering because she was still... Well, yeah, we, well, that part we've already said. And it wasn't just that she was technically alive. If she's whimpering, she's alive, right? And by the way, A, do you got any more questions? You know, I'm... <laughs> <laughs> Come on, A, make as many comments as you want. What else you got? Oh, never mind. Hey, no problem, no problem. Why what, turtle? Why what, turtle? What do you mean? When you say why, what, do you, what are you saying? Uh, I think they were all had throat wounds. And I say that because we were listening to that medical examiner and there was people, multiple people that speculated, not the medical examiner, the coroner, who said that the uh, Singh was the one who did the uh, autopsy, I think. That's the medical examiner. But she's a coroner who really shouldn't have put any opinions out there at all. But she started to say, you know, like TH sound. And some people think maybe she was trying to say thorax because it was too technical and then switch it to something a lay person would know, like upper chest or something. But I think it was the, um, I mean, uh, I think it's, she was about to say throat because a single wound, she said, killed all four people. I have a hard time believing that. I think when the medical examiner looked through it, it's going to be significantly different than what the coroner said. I mean, when you get stabbed by a knife of that magnitude, in the upper chest multiple times, there's got to be more than one fatal wound in there, just accidentally. I mean, it would be bizarre almost to um, not have any other fatal wounds, right? Yeah, well, I, I've called her that too. I said M-E and then I, I correct myself. Didn't it say in the affidavit that Ethan's wounds were later determined to be stabbing? Uh, no, didn't say that. Uh, let's see, let me read up here. I'll see what the sentence was. It's right here, it says, Chapin was also deceased with wounds later determined to be caused by sharp force injuries. That's all it says. All right. So here we go. Mortensen stated she looked out of her bedroom but did not see anything when she heard the comment about someone being in the house. Mortensen stated she opened her door a second time when she heard what she thought was crying coming from Kernodle's room. Mortensen then said she heard a male voice say something to the effect of, it's okay, I'm going to help you. 
So I think we, you guys have come up with some pretty good, um, you know, theories here on that. Yeah. So that one, the the last one, was Kernodal Kernodal saying that she heard somebody say, "There's." I mean, she's the one that said, "Somebody's here." And then Koberger, this is one of the ideas that I had in one of my videos. He heard her say that, and then he went down there and that they basically saying that alerted Koberger that there's somebody else awake that knows he's there. Then he goes downstairs and then he maybe he does chase Xana into the room, strikes her really quick, and then boom, jumps over and plunges a knife into... I bet you Ethan has the least amount of wounds for some reason. I don't know, I guess we'll see at the end. But uh, he gets... Like he has this... Uh, obviously the volume of blood that likely came out of him, given the fact that it went outside means that like he probably uh, you know is a severe arterial you know, like a neck you know just you know I don't want to get too graphic on that <laughs> I mean it was coming out and onto the ground and then Xana was still alive but he thought she was dead then he's like trying to put his knife back in the sheath but anyway he's like wait where, where's my sheath then he goes back upstairs can't find it coming back down he hears whimpering maybe she's moving around a little bit he goes back in and says, it's okay, I'm here to help you. And then he finishes her off. And it's, maybe she was even on the bed at that point. And, you know, like with Ethan, like she makes her way. I mean, it's kind of sad if you think about it. Like maybe she's up there trying to be with Ethan because she's barely alive. And then he comes down and says, it's okay, I'm here to help you. And then he attacks her, throws her on the ground, and that's where you get the thud and why she's found on the ground, but she was on the bed when um, he heard the, uh, when he said, it's okay, I'm here to help you, she's on the bed. Does that make sense? Because there's a loud thud that happens too. Hopefully that made sense. Uh, they might have stabbed it in several fatal areas. No, but that's not how the, she worded it, Dallas Rose. She said they were, each one of them was killed by one single, you know, it was like really specific. But I think there's a lot of fatal wounds. I, I think what it, what, what it is is sort of like the, in the Jody Arias case when she cut his throat. Um, I think that is the the final... The gunshot wound in the Arius case would not have killed him at all. And then she came back and stabs him, and some of those would have been fatal, like the one to the Vena Cava. But then she pulls his uh, throat back and cuts his throat, almost his head off, basically. And he he dies. So is that the one sort of like, you know, that you go, oh, that, that's the one that killed him, like immediately. Or do you count the one that would have killed him See, I would, have, I would say in a murder case, the one that killed them first is the one that is the strike that killed them. There might be some other wounds that you would live for a while but then die, but the one that just immediately killed them, I think, is the one that you would mark down as the fatal blow. So maybe the neck wounds in this case are the ones. Thank you. You know they exist. What do you think of that? Definitely believe he did not see her. Did not see who. Does anybody think BK saw Del No, I don't. I don't. Yeah. I don't think at all. I think it looks like this. So you got a picture of the house is dark. I, this is like as light. This is probably brighter than any house you've ever been in the way this looks here. Uh, but anyways, yeah. So let's go back. I'm going backwards a little bit. So this is what it would look like when Koberger was leaving. After killing, attacking Xana for the second time, if that is what happened. If he left the sheath there intentionally, then 
then it's hard to explain. That's the weird part is if you left the sheet there intentionally, it's hard to explain the, it's okay, I'm here to help you. So anyways, he goes right here. Now look at that. That door is open, but it's going to be dark in her room. And it's dark in the living room, except for the good vibe sign that's right on the right wall there. You can't see it, but I don't, I don't have it there, but it would be on the wall right over to the right here. And then in here, it's going to be relatively dark too. And so he's just, you know, he's going to get the hell out of here. So when he walked by, that's Dylan's room right there on the right. He just went like this. I'm getting the hell out of here. Goes up the sliding glass door. And then we cut over to this one. And he comes out the patio right here. And then he runs up the hill, gets into the car, basically where I'm parked right now. And he takes off at a high rate of speed. I wish he had a Glock 40. Huh? Oh. Wait, you know, I don't think I have it on. I have it on top chat. There we go. I think I'm missing some stuff. Yeah, he, I think he did use headlights. I don't know if he used them right here yet but i think once he came around this see right over here there's this back behind the house is right here of uh, the 500 queen road area see how high that is up in the air over there by the way and then you come down and i think his lights were turned off right here and he just kind of parked in here you can see a little bit there are lights on some of these buildings so you come around and you just park your car you wouldn't want your lights flashing into madison mogan's bedroom would you That'd be ridiculous. So I don't think he did that. I think he turned them off. And then he only turned them on when he was leaving again. <laughs> Creep burger. <laughs> yeah. How about cold burger? Hey, cold burger. You're cold. Boom. I think Ethan was on the floor, fell off the bed for the blood to... Well, I don't know. How come the corner is like they were all on the bed? Headlamp. What the hell? Didn't the cops see him? He didn't have uh, headlamps on. What are you talking about? What the hell didn't the cops see him? Why the hell didn't the cops see him at the Banfield area? What, what are you talking about, Turtle? <laughs> I, could, I, you know, I don't think I could read a more ununderstandable uh, comment in my life. Gray, if BK used headlamp, why the hell didn't the cops see him at the Banfield area? What? What does that mean? That means a, a total lack of understanding of what's going, what, what's going on in the case. I don't know what that means. Maybe write it differently so I can uh, understand what you're saying. I can't believe the coroner actually called and spoke to Kaylee's 17-year-old sister and told her everything that happened. Well, yeah, it is hard to believe, probably because it didn't. Let's see. I just can't get over how much closer together everything is than I thought it was. Yeah, isn't that amazing? I mean, just look at that. Man, that's nuts right there. You know, I, I feel I should have taken my drone and put that uh the mavic 2 and put the 360 degree camera on the top of that that would have been amazing we could be looking around in all directions right now much like this camera right here i mean don't you think that's incredible like you go down to this area let's see is it not playing Oh, there it is. Come on. Yeah, so that's interesting, see? See, there's the front of the house. That's the house that was just torn down, like, the next day. And there's 500 Queen Road. Degree. Yeah. See that? And then, look at this. This is 1112 two King Road right here. This will give you a great um, example of the... 
There, I like to zoom in a little bit because it makes it more what it really looks like. That's my <laughs> my son over there. Got a little vape, I guess. They do uh, Philippines. I guess they smoke all the time. See right there. There's a there's where the camera is right there. That little thing. That was a light fixture. They put a camera in that. Okay. And if we go back a little bit, uh, again, look how close that is. There's there's the wall, but it's around the side over there. I think he did plan on changing the plates. I think he knew he was timing the murders with his plate change. Yeah. And so you walk around the corner here, and he's now he's laughing at something I said. But right up here at the top of this hill up here, that's where we had to be as media to film the house. Now, some people were, they got special privilege and they got to be right, uh, like right here or something. No, not right there. I think it was, yeah, I think it was kind of right there. It might have been right here, though. But they could stand right there. I, I should have flown more straight in front of it, though, with my drone. I got some pretty good shots, though. And you guys remember when I went up the uh, street here? You can see the house through the woods here on the drive. And I even did it with the GoPro camera. There's the house right there. And now we're walking back down, I guess. Yeah, it's weird. Out. See, this is only a four-minute walk to just to get to here. There's a good one right there. And there's the deck and Kaylee's room right there. Oh, good for her, Cameron. Way to mention another idiot. Thank you. Jesus. Let's see. During the demolition. I thought it was pretty good too, wasn't it? <laughs> I don't understand. Jesus, who cares? Maybe she just walked over there and made it look like she was a media person. I, I really don't give a shit. Uh, she's not an idiot. She's the one who... Well, I think she is, Cameron. Sorry. Sorry. Maybe come back another time. Let's see. What do we got here? You said things are closer together than it seems. The pure psychopathy to be able to carry this out with so many buildings around and not think he's uh, get caught. Let's see, what does that say? My sentence didn't finish. I added afterwards, wasn't being rude. I was saying, I think that would be dumb. Not that we're, huh? I don't even know. What you, I didn't even read a comment that you made. One point eight thousand seconds. <laughs> yeah, right there. There you go. <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> that's what happens, Jay. That's what happens. All right, so we'll get out of this one. I mean, you could see all the way up here. I almost went, was thinking about putting, you know, setting up shop at the top of the hill up here because it's right there. I mean, it's really close. Uh, but we were right here anyways. Right, let's get back to the this part here. Mortensen stated she opened the door for the third time after she heard the crying. So after she heard, likely Zana, uh, do we all don't we all agree that the whimpering or crying was Zana? Are we all pretty much on the same page on that one?
Yeah, I don't really care the why. I mean, I mean, I care some a lot of times the why things happen. But you know, when somebody goes, "Why is Koberger like that?" I really don't give a shit. Really, I care about why things happen. I mean, I guess you could say, um, you know, some of that's important. You know, like the that's more criminology stuff. Like, you know, what made Koberger the violent, crazy person he is? The victimology is just about you know the victims and you know what types of things about them may have led them you know in this to what happened to them it, sometimes it matters sometimes it doesn't you know if they're just randomly chosen then it doesn't now the, what do you mean that could have been the dog the dog what do you mean <laughs> obviously it was a human that's what Dylan heard Right. Wardenson stated she opened the door for the third time after she heard the crying and saw a figure clad in black clothing and a mask that covered the person's mouth and nose walking towards her. Mortensen described the figure as 5'10 or taller. And everyone goes, but Koberger's 6'4! Yeah, but you forgot to mention that his driver's license said six foot. So when Dylan Morton said, said 5'10 or taller, that's a pretty damn good estimate, wouldn't you say? Put a one if you find that to be a pretty good estimate. 5'10 or taller for a six foot tall man. Yeah, it must be like Scooby-Doo, uh, that kind of a brain. Athletically built with bushy eyebrows, the male walked past Mortensen as she stood in a frozen shock phase. The male walked towards the back sliding glass door. Mortensen locked herself in her room after seeing the male. So maybe before that her room wasn't locked. You know, and then she finally locked it once she, you know, uh, was like, whoa, who's this guy? Mortensen did not state that she recognized the male. The lead investigator, uh, that leads investigators to believe that the murderer left the scene. I don't know why, when you say Mortensen did not state that she recognized the male. This leads investigators to believe that the murderer left the scene. I don't, I don't understand how her not recognizing him led him. I, I don't get that part there. I think if you're going to refer to the fact that he went through the, into the kitchen, sure. The combination of Mortensen's statements to law enforcement, review of forensic downloads of records from Funk and Mortensen's phone, and video of a suspect video as described below, leads investigators to believe the homicides occurred between 4 a.m. and 425. I think they could easily make that. Well, here's, here's the thing. 425 is incorrect, right? We already know that. The white Elantra was driving away at a high rate of speed at 420. So that means at 425, I mean, he's just giving a, a range here. Just like they did in the Delphi case when they said noon to 5 o'clock. So, you know, 4 to 425, it doesn't make sense because 420, the car is speeding away at a high rate of speed. We also know that at 408, that's when the vehicle... Uh, I mean, how many of you guys have seen all my videos that I've made regarding, because that's really <laughs> so crucial, it's almost unbelievable. There's a camera on 1330 Linda Lane right here, and the video footage was released. I didn't say the time. Yeah, I'm saying you have to say between 408 and 420, except I always say between uh, 410 and 418 because you have, like, you parked a car at 408, you're likely doing a little something outside the car, but by the time you get upstairs, maybe it's 4.10, um, but it could be like 4.09, right? So let's say you get upstairs and it's 4.09 because you got in there really quick, and then maybe you left at 4.17 and you go out, you know, 4.18-ish, and you're trying to change your clothing really quick or put your clothing in a plastic bag and then the, yeah, you have on the outside, then you put your gloves in there, and then you try to mitigate the blood spatter in the car, and then you drive away at a high rate of speed. 
So that's really where you could put it. But if you watch all those videos I made, there's a camera at 1330 here, and it films as a vehicle drives back here and around, and then it shows back up again. That means it went like this at the very minimum, it kept going like this. But it didn't do that. As crude as you are, I think you are great. As crude as I am. Well, thank you. <laughs> as, as crude as I am. Is that a, is that a compliment? I. That almost sounds like a lizard eye, my lizard eye comment, doesn't it? So I'll, I'll tell you guys that one again for the new people that are here just now. See, when I was about, man, it wasn't even that long ago, I guess, well, you know, 18 years ago or so, I was in a bar, there was a cute waitress. Um, and I said, hey, you wanna come? She came, sat with me at my table, you know, and I was talking to her and I thought, wow, you're cute and everything. And I was just thinking to myself. And then, but she had these um, exotic looking eyes. So I said to her, I go, man, your eyes look like a lizard. You know, and she got the hell up and uh, took off. <laughs> but I meant that they were exotic, okay, everybody? And shouldn't that be, shouldn't that mean something, for God's sakes? She didn't even ask, what do you mean that they look like a lizard? Uh, then I could have said, well, I meant like they are, um, yeah, they're exotic looking. Well, it could have been Scott. I mean, you know, why couldn't it have been classy? They, she could have been like, oh, what type of lizard? And then I would have said, the most beautiful lizard you've ever seen. And then she would have said, oh, that's so sweet. And on our wedding rings, they would have had a serpent with, uh, that are in, you know, it just would have been... <laughs> You have the greatest lizard eyes in the history of the world. Yeah. Like a reptile. <laughs> what do you mean? Well, I just mean they look like a reptile. Well, that's, that's not very nice. No, I mean they're, you know, exotic, like a reptile. Oh, but it's too late. You've already said I look like a lizard. I'm, I'm going <laughs> to I'm gonna take off now. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Right, of course, American lady. I mean, isn't that obvious? Jeez, well, I mean, American lady stating the obvious, everybody. You should have just said you had exotic eyes, not lizard. Hey, wait, thank you. Boy, I didn't realize that. Sorry, just not a compliment. Wow. Sorry, just not a compliment. Wow. Well, go tell your clowns out there the same thing. I'm going to get rid of you. Have a good day, R. Have a nice time on some other channel out there. Um, anybody that would make a comment like that isn't somebody that would ever last in here. Don't you agree? Wow, that's just not a compliment. Gee. Well, all right, but I, I know it wasn't. I thought it, it was stupid. I just didn't think of anything to say at the time. Okay? It was just one of those dumb moments where you just go, oh, <coughs> that's why I tell it and it's funny. Okay? So I don't need people going, oh, oh good. <laughs> wow. I mean, have a little sense of humor, you wackos. I mean, my God. Whew. Bam. Unbelievable. I just didn't think it was very nice, Gray, you bastard. Maybe it was a dog whimpering, and he said to the dog, Here, let me help you. No, no, no. <laughs> no, uh, that's ridiculous. Like the time the paramedic partner denied a woman because she had no ice cream at her house. He had to be there, but it was also funny. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I don't want to, I don't even know, I want to hear the rest of the story there. I mean, did, uh, did they survive it? So you guys have seen all the videos where the car goes around multiple times, but check it out. I don't know why it took me so long to get this figured out here, but uh, all right, down here it says a review of camera footage indicated that a white sedan hereafter suspect vehicle one was observed in, you know, at 326 at um, 
Indian Hills Drive. We've already gone through all this. If you haven't seen those videos, you know, go check them out. And at 328, it passed the A and W. So I guess you know, just to quickly show you, this is 700 Indian Hills Drive. I drove this at night on a live stream, and it's exactly the right time. At 326, you drive just like this. Go through this intersection, and at 328, it passes the A and W right here. Then after you do that, you drive by here, guess what? It passes Linda Lane where there is a camera that shoots this way down the road filming a vehicle passing right there at 329. Then at 330, the white Elantra is picked up on the 111 2 King Road camera coming around into the area right here, which you can see beautifully on this shot right here. So the white Elantra would be driving down the road like this, turn in, and then right here it would come down and then go this direction and on the Google Earth side of it that's right here that's 1112 King Road it would drive like this and you could see it come back around like this at 331 it comes around and then it takes off and does a full loop so it leaves Willanta Drive comes around I think it's back on Steiner for a moment and it comes around then on uh, Taylor Avenue and then shows back up in the area. But on each of those first two loops, it waits here for like three minutes, waiting and watching, stocking. The third time, it comes back at 357 into the area and drives around. And then it appears that it waited again for about three minutes. So it's about four o'clock. Did he see the DoorDash driver as he was leaving that time? You know, like, oh, wait, there's a DoorDash driver. Don't know. Then five or six minutes later, he came back at 4.05. He comes driving around, and then he comes back over here, and let's pick it up in the document. That's how you know this camera is 100% accurate. So it says the vehicle, starting at 3.29, that's when it was seen on that one Taylor or um, Linda Lane camera that shoots straight out, this one right here, and ended at 4.20 a.m. These sightings show suspect vehicle one make an initial three passes. You see all three passes go behind the building here uh, at 1122 King Road residence and then leave via Wallanta Drive. Based off of my experience as a patrol officer, this is a residential neighborhood with a very limited number of vehicles that travel in the area during the early morning hours. Upon review of the video, there are only a few cars that enter and exit this area during this time frame. Suspect Vehicle 1 can be seen entering the area a fourth time. This is the really, it just, it's so nailed, it's unbelievable. So on the surveillance camera from this building right here, I don't know if you guys, I mean, we could just pull that sucker up. The raw footage, I'll, I'll show you this. You guys want me to do that? I can just pull the raw footage up and we'll just show you this exact portion in here. And that way you'll all know for certain, every one of you watching will know absolutely for certain that the White Elantra parked at 408 and you don't have to listen to other people saying, how do we know it was a White Elantra, you bastard? Um, so hold on, it's only going to take a second here. in here star dot mp4 do you guys know how to do that when you're searching on your computer the wild cards like you can use say something like let's say you know you have a Coburger video uh, PDF file so you go and it has different wording at the end but you might say Coburger star dot PDF so it's a wild card but you can type in like uh, you might have a date in the front you can say star Coburger dot PDF and then it means that it can be anything before coburger.pdf and then you can use question marks and shit like that anyways let's get the uh, here is the raw footage one to two four to five okay here we go. Uh, let me open that again with the open with vlc player and then we're going to go to the uh, get my music playing again because it's like my Linus blanket thanks Mark Willis
All right, so watch this. The probable cause document states this. So for those out there that just don't see it, you're just still one of those people. I don't know, I heard, I was watching this one channel and they said that it, okay, well, they're full of crap, all right? So this says, suspect vehicle one can be seen entering the area a fourth time. And you know what that means? Now we know entering the area means right here, driving by Linda Lane, because at 329, it's seen entering the area right there. So they know at 404, it drives by right here. And given the fact, the same timing, that means it comes around about 405 into this area. And watch this. Here we go. We're pulling out the raw footage. And we're just going to move it forward here. And look at this. Here comes the exact vehicle they were referring to. See, it's lighting up the trees right here, lighting up the trees. Can you guys see it or what screen am I on here? Oh, yeah. So it's lighting up the trees. And here it comes at 4.05 and 29 seconds, the white Elantra or coming around the corner. And like, look what it does, though. Look what it does right here. It pulls in, and you can see the white Elantra, exact shape of the windows and everything right there. And it pulls in, and it's going to back up. Hey, welcome, Benny. And so it's in here, and it turns around. See? Look, at it. it's like, okay, I'm backing up now, and it backs up. And then it Keep heads on. out again the same direction it came from. Right, so you guys all uh, familiar with what I'm doing here? Uh, I guess to augment that, I could come out here and get, uh, let's see. Oh man, do I have that window open? Um, L, and then a uh, the second. The I'll just keep going with what I'm saying here. And then we'll look at that in a minute. So see right, right back here, it just turned around and went back out there. What we're looking at here is, this is it. Right here, drove down this way, and then right here it turned around, and then it backed out and went back this way. Now look at what it says in the probable cause document. Suspect vehicle one can be seen entering the area a fourth time, at 404, right? So that means it took a minute or so to get back into Queen Road. And it can be seen driving eastbound on King Road. Wow, there you go. So look at it. It enters the area and then it can be seen driving eastbound this direction in front of 500 Queen Road, which is this building right here. And this camera right here is clear as a bell. They see the white Elantra on this house right here. And it drives right here. Here's 500 Queen Road. And then, then listen to this, and it goes, at 4-4, it, it, um, at it can be seen driving eastbound on King Road, stopping and turning around in front of 500 Queen Road, number 52. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> I've always tried to figure out where number 52 was, and for some reason now it's popping up. This is it right here. This is number 52. That is exactly where it pulled in right there, backed up, and came out. Can you see that? So law enforcement has the 1330 Linda Lane camera footage. They saw it turning around there at unit number 52, right exactly where we just saw it on that video. Do you, do you guys understand what we're looking at here? And then when the suspect vehicle one is in front of the King Road residence, it appears to unsuccessfully attempt to park or turn around in the road the vehicle then continues to the intersection of Queen and King Road. So what it does is, after it comes back around here, we can't see this on camera, but apparently it tries to turn around or park in this area, and it can't do it. Then it comes over here and does a three-point turn, and this camera picks it up, but we don't have that one, but they're tracking it on this 1112 King Road camera. It's really obvious. The vehicle then continued to the intersection of Queen and King, which is right here. Now, where it can be seen completing a three-point turn. So it goes in here, turns around, and then listen to what it says. 
it says, and then driving eastbound again down Queen Road. So then it starts heading east this direction. All right, so that would mean that at approximately, so this is 4.05. Let's see what it says on the clock here on the video. So that was 4.06 and, and 8 seconds when, let's see when it goes around. Let's see. So it's pulling into the area here. And oh, it's already in the area. Now it's backing up. And that means it left this area at 4.06 and I think it says 8 seconds. Let's see. So right when it goes around the corner, I'll stop the clock. It's going around the corner, going around the corner. The lights disappear right now. Boom. So 4.06 and 8 seconds. And that's about when the car is right here. So that means it gets to here at about 4.06 and mm, let's just say 20 seconds or so. Because you have to kind of drive slow down this thing. 4.06 and 20 seconds. Then it does a three-point turn here. So that's probably almost 4.07-ish by the time it's done doing its turn. And then the document continues on and says, Suspect Vehicle 1 is next seen to... Uh, let's see, that's not the part. Where it can be seen completing a three-point turn and then driving eastbound again down Queen Road. Then the next thing it says is, Suspect Vehicle 1 is next seen departing the area of King and... King Road residence at 4.20. So check it out. After the vehicle did the three-point turn here, it headed this way down the road. Now watch this. This is so perfectly timed, it's just unbelievable, but there's so many people out there that still just go, no, 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 no. Okay, so remember I said at that King and Queen it did a three-point turn probably at 4.07? Now look at this. Boom. Here it comes again. Back behind Queen. Uh, 500 Queen Road, and then it continues its pass like it did on all the other ones. So what I'll do is I'll uh, open up the... And look at the time it is. It just went around that turn at 4.07 and 46 seconds. So what I'm imagining is that the vehicle parked right around 4.08. So it comes around right here at about 4.07 and something seconds. Comes around, and it parks right over here at 4.08. Does everybody see how there's no escaping the logic here because that is the white elantra it's doing exactly what the probable cause document says to a t even now in front of number 52 okay so this is what youtubers should be talking about not hey there's a tunnel under it you bastards no it's um this this right here is incredibly significant and if I was on a grand jury, especially when you realize that, that uh, 328, when it passed the A&W over here, it was missing its front license plate, which Brian Koberger's was missing because he's from Pennsylvania. We also know that he turned off his phone at 247 over here. And guess what? Right after the murders, his phone turned on again. 28 minutes after the murders, right down here, heading south out of Moscow, Idaho. So when you put those together, and, and another thing, by God, his DNA was found on the knife sheath in the room. Isn't that enough? What's reasonable about saying he's innocent here? Nothing. Okay? There's nothing reasonable about it. You'd almost have to be, like, just forgoing common sense, logic, and reason. Yeah. But anyways, uh, yeah, so now we know for certain that it was 408. Let me get to the, I wanted to show you this Insta360 camera. And um, Maybe it was, was it the same trip? I think it was the drone footage, actually, wasn't it? Yeah, that's right. Insta360, let me do the drone footage. Mavic Mini Pro, and I think it's the one that we were starting to watch before. Open with VLC player. Hey, right, watch this one. So this is exactly what we were just watching here. So let me show you where we're at right now. For those who don't know, right now we are in this video right here i just drove down from the side of 1122 king road and turned right and we're now right there 
facing that direction. So this drone footage is really clear, that's why I'm using it. Watch how smooth it flies through here. So this is behind there. And now for those of you who haven't seen this type of presentation, uh, you'll be able to see exactly where that white Elantra drove, but in a slower form. I've have, I have many videos where I drive this, but this one is you're just out openly walking around. I also have a 360 degree shot of this from the first trip I made out there where I walked around. But look, this building right in front of us, front of, uh, in front of us is number 52. That's where it turned around, right back in there. You see that? So it was right back in here. It did that turnaround <coughs> the first time and then headed back out. And then the drone, look how steep this is. So the drone's flying straight against the horizon. That's how high up it has to go just to get up in this little area. It's literally like eight, nine, ten feet taller there than it is just right on the other side of the building there. And then this is this is how the car drove up. It drove right up through this area right here each time. And then around. Well, he admits to being in the area. Isn't that crazy? Because he knows he's dead to rights on surveillance footage, right? So he knows he's in the area. Uh, so he has to admit that, you know, I'm just driving around, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But how come your white Elantra is doing loops around this house? And guess what? You stopped between 408 and then at 420, you drove away to high rate of speed. And guess who was murdered in the 12 minutes that your white Elantra was stopped back here? Well, guess what? It was um, all four. Ethan Chapin, Zana Kernodle, Madison Mogan, Kaylee Gonzalez. They were all killed while his white Elantra was stopped. God, I hope I spin around here and look the other way. We had a cat <laughs> that tried to attack the damn... Oh, yeah. I didn't, I, man, I wish I kept turning it there. <laughs> it's actually hilarious because that's me when I haven't shaved for a day. But, you know, when I was in, when I got pulled over, I looked like a blimp, but, you know, I'm not that big. You know, I could lose a few pounds for sure, but, you know, I'm just, you know, I'm 58 years old, so I'm not really, look at this thing, though. Th this cat was trying to jump by, it kind of lost what I was doing, because he literally came out and was stalking the drone. It was weird. Yeah, I guess I did go up in the air for a moment there. Yeah. All right. You still there, Jay Case? <laughs> yeah, I mean, so I don't look that old when I... I mean, I take... Uh, you know what really is awesome, everybody? If you don't take fish oil every day, you're 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 missing out. You're blowing it. I don't sell fish oil, but I'm saying it, if you have eczema or anything like that, like dry fingers or anything, man, you take fish oil, a couple of the good shit every day, you're going to be, it just fixes a lot of things. And it's omega-3 fatty acids. Makes your skin a little bit better, everything. Yeah, krill oil, you know, same omega-3 fatty acids. Seriously, man, <laughs> you, I, I get the one that's the, I don't know if it's like Icelandic something or other, Nordic something on Amazon, but man, it's um, incredible. I used to get the, I used to have eczema on my fingers. They were just brittle dry, and it seems like it makes your fingernails grow. I mean, everything is better with it. You still got your aches and pains and stuff, I'm telling you that, but yeah, Nordic, yeah, that's what it was. I don't take collagen. What does that do for you? Is that like just something you can buy? Uh, what does that do for you, collagen? Stop it. Stop it. Heard on Banfield. Yeah, that, none of that stuff has anything to do with anything. Be well. 
none of the band field footage, the three guys up there, there, you're watching the wrong people. That stuff has absolutely nothing to do with this case at all. I know it makes it a lot more content if you can claim these, these other people, but you need to just not follow along on any of that stuff. I don't care if somebody says stop it, stop it. That could have been somebody walking down the street and uh, you know some you know a girl and the guy behind him was throwing a uh, candy bar at her back or whatever you know and she goes oh stop it stop it it doesn't mean anything. You're talking about two o'clock when everybody's still awake moving around a lot. Oh that one good for your skin too. All right maybe I'll take a look at that one. But fish oil, the reason that became a thing is because um, I think uh, Eskimos, they hardly have any heart disease, apparently. And they eat fish oil, because, and the fish oil, the omega-3 fatty acids kind of break it up so they don't get the, I don't know if I'm saying this correctly, but the, the plaque and all that as much. And that doesn't mean, hey, everybody, if you take fish oil, I can eat 16 boxes of pizza a week because this sucker gets in there. Yeah. I mean, it really does work. I, I don't mean to, I'm not selling anything because I don't have a, uh, you know, I'm not working for any of these companies or anything. I'm just telling you that my experience, that really changed a lot of things um, in terms of skin and hair and things like, I don't know. Maybe not, I'm not really noticing anything with my hair, but it's made my fingernails grow more. <laughs> you know, not that I cared, but like they just, you can see that they grow longer. I don't know if that has anything to do with it, but um, I know it for certain helps your skin out though. And definitely your cardio, your, your vascular situation, I think. But you gotta really like do it every single day, all the time, like it's just part of what you do. Right, Jay Case? I might have to try that collagen though. Wait, what, how long have I been on here for? Shit, let me open up here. Hold on a second. Let's go back to the uh, res I meant to do where people could call in. So there you go. Let's, uh, let's do some call-in time. All right. Who's calling in? And you can call in and say your theory inside the house. I know we've kind of shifted off of that, but I was just kind of going through the same stuff that's... Um, the key, really, to the case. The white Elantra, that cam the camera footage that was leaked um, by the actual person that came after. You know the guy that came out and tried to attack me? Uh, he's the one that, that's his camera footage. He's the one that released that. And then he's upset that somebody's trying to film the camera. <laughs> what? Somebody's filming the camera, showing the location of the camera after you released the footage. Nobody would even have known about it. Apple cider vinegar, too. Some people disagree. It works well for me. What does it do for you? I couldn't believe that guy. Yeah, well, they were blaming me. Gray, you sh man, what a weak person. What am I supposed to do, man? If he had touched me, I would have acted differently. Like if he grabbed my arm or something, you know? But uh, he didn't touch me at all. I'm not going to start, like, punching and getting inside. I don't, I'm not from there. You know, I don't know who this guy is who jumped out of a, like, out of nowhere. I was just standing there, and he's like, Ugh! you know? Kind of a weirdo. Psychos do that shit. Uh, a, let's see. Hey, uh, listen, hey, be well, be gone. We're not buying any, any falsified audio. It's not all a hoax. Do you honestly think the police would allow leaked audio? That, we're not talking about the audio. It's, it's surveillance footage. It's real. I know it's real. I'm 100% certain it's real. And don't you guys remember why we know it's real? You remember the Banfield audio at 3? When there was those three horns that go, eh, 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 like that. We found the exact same time on the surveillance footage and that same honking sound 
shows up on that footage, and it, it just is real. I, I mean, I can just tell you there's four hours of footage. It's real. There's no doubt in my mind. Law enforcement has that exact same footage, and it is 100% legit. 100%. There is no chance that that, uh, that, that surveillance footage is, fa is false. Okay? Zero. And so if you hear anybody saying that, run as fast as you can because they're lying to you right at that moment. So check it out. I'll show you the other passes just so you'll see them. So remember how I just showed you the 405 and the 407 when it finally finished it? So here we go. Let's go all the way to 331. It's going to pop in there again. Right there it is. Boom. So this is exactly when they said. Remember how it shows up in the area at 329. And then it starts his first pass. So that means you know it's going to be right around this time. And here it comes. My logo, unfortunately. Let me get to a different. See if I can switch over really quick to this screen. And now you can see up in the upper left here. Here it comes into the scene. The lights over here are beaming. And now it's almost 331. And here comes the Elantra. And this is what it did the first three passes. Here it goes, 330, uh, 331, boom. Right there, goes around. Then we go from 331 and then I think it stopped for three minutes, did that large loop that I was saying on Wallanta Drive. And then, let's see, right here at 3.38, it comes back into the area, 3.38 and something. I think, unless I passed it already. Oh, here it comes. It's more like 3.39, I guess. Here it comes. Or did I pass it again? That's hard to... There it is. Shoot. Man, I keep zipping by it. So here's 338 and 45. And then I think right after this, it comes back around again. Good night, American lady. Always keeping me on my toes. That's good. Uh, yeah, that good. I think your theory with the bathroom, when you kind of look at it again, might be something to look at. And maybe that's why they mentioned the bathroom there. So here it comes, 3.39 and 8 seconds. And look at how it's doing the same thing. It's just totally stalking this area. And that's why law enforcement said that they believe they don't know if it was just the house or an individual, but they know that the vehicle was um, stalking that house. Therefore, it must be that it was, you know, I mean, it was planning on going into that house. So that's 339, right? Now it takes that longer route, and 345 right here is when it goes to the gas station, if that is it. Timing is absolutely perfect. And then at 357, watch, here it comes again. Right there, boom, comes around the corner. And there it goes again, the exact same profile, everything's the same. Comes around. And look what time it is, 357, 15 seconds. So likely right around 358, I would say. It could be, you know, 357 and 45 seconds when the car stopped. Uh, but I think by 350, or uh, excuse me, that's the wrong time. This is 357. This is not, this isn't the final one here. So this is 357. He pulls around and then he sit. I don't think he stops. Um, I think, well, this time he might stop for three minutes, all right? The time before he didn't stop to hit the 345 at the gas station. But this time he stops for about three minutes and then he comes back around, does the whole loop on Wallanta Drive, comes back around at 405. But man, can't you see that? That's just so clear, it's, so, it's unbelievable. Once I put all that together, I just go, oh, this, this, is, this is money here. And you know what they're gonna have, everybody? They're gonna have amazing footage and let me show you what they're going to be looking at here. It's going to look something like this. See that? This is the same day, 11.13, but only at 2 in the morning. It's an interesting time there because that's exactly the time frame that 
Madison and Kaylee got home. So I think this is a still frame of them arriving back home, being dropped off by the well, whoever that was, that the, the ride share. And I think that's exactly what we're looking at here. They're just left out the vehicle. That's what we're, but that's the exact time that they showed up there. If you look at that, look how clear that shot is. So what's going to happen is if we look at this. This is basically what we're exact same thing we're looking at on that in that on that image. This is the one 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 two King Road. This is King Road, and notice that house right there. I think if we go up to this one, there's that house. This is 112 King Road. This camera right here is going to be amazing. It's going to show the white Elantra coming in, turning at 330. Uh, it's going to come by right here, right? Then it's going to be picked up on by the other camera that we just showed you a minute ago behind um, you know, back, uh, what was the, the map here? Hold on. This one right here, back here. It's gonna, this, this camera will pick it up. It's going to come around, wait for three minutes, and then we'll see the car leaving. And that's going to be really interesting to me is to see the exact time the car was leaving. And then we'll know for certain that it paused right here for two or three minutes on three of the loops that it took. So you're going to see it really clearly and then it'll come back around and you'll see it leave. And then I think, given that this might be cropped, you might even see the car's lights up on the road over here. Wouldn't that just be amazing? You see it driving around and that's Wallanta Drive. Okay. And then you'll see at 3.37 or so, it's going to come back around this way. And then you'll see it on the other camera again behind. Then you'll see it leaving. And then at 356 or so, you'll see it come back around. Then you'll see it leaving again, driving around, up around, up in there. And then you're going to see at 405 it come in, drive back around, and then turn around at 52 Queen Road. And then you'll see it. You won't see it, but you might see lights over here. And they know it tried to turn around and or park. And then it drives by again, this camera, and you'll see it do this beautiful three-point turn right here in the road, drive this direction. Then the Linda Lane camera will pick it up again, and then you won't see anything until 420 when the car speeds out of here at a high rate of speed, and you'll see it zipping around up on Milan to drive again. That's what's going to happen. They have that information. It's going to be crystal clear when it does the three-point turn that it's a white Elantra, and you know it's a white Elantra because it'll match absolutely perfectly on each of the passes on this camera here. See, that's what these guys aren't getting for some reason. They're trying to tell you that the car that goes around behind 500 Queen Road is a cop car. Wow, that's amazing. Or it's a whole different vehicle. The one time, yeah, it's a launcher, but the other three, it isn't. No, no, it is, because law enforcement is tracking the vehicle and using this camera, and they know it's a white launcher driving by. <sighs> Must be another camera. We don't know if... We don't know that, Art Reese. I just explained to you how they could see the lights of the vehicle on these trees over here if it was trying to turn around over there and they could see yeah it's kind of doing things and they could hear it on likely the camera here doing something you know did it turn around did it try to park you know we don't know but maybe there is a camera maybe there isn't but i think it's pretty easy if you see a, a light go over here and then all of a sudden it's over there and it's doing different things that you can assume what the headlights are doing and adjust it we did the same thing in the kylie rodney case his nose arrived at 2 in the morning, which is an hour and 30 minutes before the Elantra. Isn't that amazing, Sozo? <laughs> yeah. Look at that picture. Ah, oh, God. How about just them by themselves? Oh, just blue, all by himself, with a, a dummy... 
All right, who's calling in? Who's calling in tonight? Oops, there goes my frame. And this call will be about what you think the sequencing is in here. And explain your theory. And if you don't call in, that's fine too. We're, this is, we're already two hours and 50 minutes into this. Is the front house in... Is the front house is Idaho house? Don't know what that means. Is the front house is Idaho house? What? Yeah, this house right here is 1112 King Road with a camera on it. This house here is 1122 King Road. On a map from overhead, this is 112 King Road. We were just looking at about like this, you know. Almost exactly like that shot is this one. Just from a you know, 3D, there's no 3D buildings on Google Earth on this in this town. So that's what we're looking at right there. Now somebody's making tea. Yeah. The audio. What do you say? The audio, not video. That B.E. Well, I don't know who that is, keeps bringing up purportedly recording the sounds of the murders at 155 as a hoax. Oh, yeah, yeah, I remember that, eh? That was, that was really early on. People are still talking about that? <laughs> Jesus. Why do you guys watch those people? It's amazing. It's... I'm going to tell you guys this right now. This, this is the truth. Uh, my videos that I'm putting out right now on this case are by far the most accurate, clear, uh, concise, absolutely truthful videos on the case. Now, when we do these ones where we're trying to do sequencing, yes, you're speculating on certain things. But if you go back and watch the other ones, they are the best videos on YouTube on this case. And I'm okay saying that. I absolutely believe it. Unfortunately, they don't get watched because they're not sensationalistic. I mean, you know, I get, I'm getting sometimes 20,000 views, right? But you got people putting out absolute nonsensical garbage that a lot of you believe, because I see your comments, and they get like 50, 60, 70,000 views. And you, you might say, well, they must be doing something right then, Gray. Yeah, what, they, what they're doing right is suckering all of you, okay? They are making you believe in fantasy land, and you're actually believing it. And going, wow, this guy's really a great investigator. I'm going to look this thing. Oh. And that's scary, man. That's, uh, that's scary times. That just shows you the power of, you know, I'm, ne I'm never going to do that to you guys. I'm never going to pretend something is true, uh, like do a whole... Yeah, go over a whole crime and make stuff up so that you believe it. All right. Now somebody was dogging me all day, like, "Hey, great, great, you weren't the first one to mention the towel, the towel." And you know, maybe somebody else out there brought it up. All right. I don't know. All I know is that I brought up the towel in that other case because I saw it move and I go, "Oh, look at that." And we talked about it on the same day that the surveillance footage was released in the Soto case, right? And maybe there's some other people. That noticed the same thing earlier, uh, but, you know, I went over the footage pretty quick, and I don't really care that much, you know? Um, I was one of the first people to notice it. That's all I can say. Um, so if you're out there and you sleuthed it out, ooh, let me see, ooh, 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 look at that other person. He made one, ooh, 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 he, he's lying. No, I mean, I just did my uh, video myself, and all I know is the person that copies my channel they brought it up four days later. So then you know that that's, there's something up with that. Yeah, so anyways, if you guys want to watch a channel who puts out factual, fact-based videos, and when I mean, I don't just mean like, like the whole premise of the video is based on the facts of the case, then this is the one you gotta go to. And if you are here, here's what's gonna happen in this case, is Brian Koberger is going to be found guilty he, I believe he 100% is the killer in this case, and law enforcement quit even investigating unless something 
comes in that's interesting for them a long time ago. They have this case nailed up. And that's why Koberger wants more time because they got to figure out a way to try to get information thrown out. That's why they're work going after the DNA. They're also trying to figure out ways to explain things, coming up with clever shit like, yeah, I was driving around in the area, but I just won't uh, say where I was driving. And after he's found guilty, what's going to happen is, is all of these people are going to claim cover-up and conspiracy, and they will continue to cover the case for years. But what's going to be amazing for me is, is by the time the trial's over, I will have a treasure trove of information to debunk every single thing that they said with a tremendous amount of more information. It'll be just like the Kanika Jenkins case having the surveillance footage. It'll just be mind-blowing. It'll be simple. Ding, 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 diddle, ding, 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 diddle, ding, 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 collaborate and listen oh yeah put a one if you're one of the people that believes that Dylan Mortensen and Bethany Funk are part of the murders put a one in there if you believe that um, that there's tunnels underneath the house put a one if you think the water tower here is some sort of has a connection to the murders somehow and the president over here Right. Good Lord, everybody. Now then, then you're then you're dumb. Let's see. Koberger's innocent derangement syndrome. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Hey, come on, that was a good one, Scouting dude. What was wrong with that one? Kids, Koberger is innocent. Yeah, probably don't want to use that name, K I I D S though. So that's probably pretty good scout dude you have to come up with something else <clears throat> I think why don't just call it KDS or something although it still has that um, yeah but hey it takes guts the pretty me to say yes I do I hope you're joking though I mean man wow Really, so you, Amy Wade, you think, what do you believe in, Amy Wade? Type in the things that you believe in of what I just said. <whistles> uh, go ahead, type them in. Wait, one of them blocked me when I did write to her. The police has the right one. I don't know what that means, the pretty me. You have to type that in again. One brain cell, the other <laughs> five brain cells. One ain't working. Where is that one? Five brain cells, four aren't working. My favorite one that Grady Judd says is this one, though. Listen. There's mosquitoes the size of bald eagles in that dead gum swamp. Man, those are big mosquitoes, I can tell you that. Five brain cells, four aren't working. This guy may Maybe be like the, the dumbest, dumbest person, person on the face, face of the earth. earth. Come on, man. What's wrong with you? You know, that's just one step above stupid. Have you lost the last three brain cells, or do you just have cabbage for brains? <laughs> well, that means he never had brain cells if his brain was, in fact, cabbage the whole time. That's amazing. Huh? You heard what I said. Uh, okay, so if you're out there and you just got here again, make sure to check your, um, like if you're subscribed to my channel, go out and make sure, I'm going to play this again for you out there. Oh wait, we got a call, well, can't answer that one, it's a call-in user, so can't answer that one, sorry about that. I think I'm just going to end the meetings now. Whenever you get call-in user, you can't answer it. Because that's the troll um, line. Where's the, um, there it is. All right. So if you're out there, now take a look on the screen here. This is what you got to do. You got to unsubscribe really quick and then hit the subscribe button. So here's how it goes. Subscribe. Then you hit the bell next to it. And then all. Boom. 
You see that? I, I found out today that only 19% of my subscribers even have that bell checked. So that means it's up to YouTube to suggest, you know, maybe you want to. All right, so go ahead. So you, you have to unsubscribe and then subscribe again and then hit the all button. Because I know a lot of your, uh, well, too bad, this account. You, if you're called call-in user, I'm not answering it. You got to figure something out with that one. Maybe next time, maybe next time. I just shut it down. Uh, every single time I get call-in user, they're a troll. Uh, what did you do again? Okay, you did it again? Okay, cool. I thought you said it was you. I don't know who... Man, you're trying to... Oh, sorry about that. I already got rid of it. I'm not sure what you said, this account. You said something like... Um, yeah, you said the wrong thing a second ago. Okay, I will. Uh, I check my YouTube subscriptions daily, so I don't need a bell. Oh, well, why don't you do it anyways? Because <laughs> sometimes I do, I do premieres on my video, and you can join in with people and chat with them while they're watching it. A little bit more fun, I think, that way. Yeah, so what do you guys think? Uh, what we went over tonight. I thought it was pretty interesting, especially the, you know, what was going on in the house here. I like some of the theories, you know. I think American Lady, you know, I, you know, she's just throwing something in there that Xana was in the bathroom. But, you know, uh, they do mention the bathroom. And so it kind of makes sense. So the, seems like the overall theory is that most most everybody believes that um, let me get rid of the zoom thing most people believe that Madison Mogan was the first one to be killed and that sort of speaks to maybe her being the, the target in fact and then also the knife sheath if it was left there intentionally is left right under her and then you've got Kaylee Gonzalez right here and she likely, you know, saw her friend being stabbed, tried to get up and help, and then she got brutally killed because she was fighting with Brian Coburn. And then there was people that suggested that the person that said, hey, there's somebody here, that was actually Kaylee. Uh, but I think it makes a little bit more sense later with Xana, you know, perhaps walking around. She was there. The DoorDash delivery bag is in the kitchen. So Koberger got into the house. We hear... A little bit before 4.12, it sounded like somebody was playing with the dog upstairs. I think that was probably like 4.10, 4.09, 9 probably, something like that. You know, 4.09.30, whatever. <laughs> and then, um, but that's actually Koberger attacking upstairs. And that could be Kaylee who said, hey, there's somebody here, right? Something like that. The other scenario is, is that he's already killed Kaylee in Madison and then you hear hey there's somebody here and that's Xana saying that because she's in the kitchen and she sort of hears some things and then when maybe when she comes down the stairs she looks back or maybe she's even that's when she's coming back from the kitchen she looks up the stairs briefly and sees somebody coming down the stairs and she goes hey there's somebody here you know right outside of Dylan Mortensen's room and then that person comes down and kind of chases her into the room and then attacks her going through the door boom and then goes straight to Ethan after he sees him there and attacks him, stabs him in the neck. And then Ethan's dying and Xana's on the floor and he thinks he killed her. And then he's like going, okay. And then he's trying to, um, you know, he's probably stabbed them both multiple times even. And now he's looking to put his knife back in the sheath. And he's like, where the, hell, well, where the hell's my knife sheath? And this is the scenario where he left it accidentally. Then he goes back upstairs to get the knife sheath and he can't find the damn thing. So then he goes back down, and then he hears whimpering coming from uh, Xana's room again. And then he goes in there, and right before he goes in, he goes, it's okay, I'm here to help you, to keep her calm. And then she's on the bed even. So let's say he left her. They're both stabbed on the bed. Ethan's already on the bed. 
Xana retreated to the bed and he stabs both of them on the bed. Then Xana's on the bed when he thinks he killed both of them. Goes upstairs looking for the knife sheath, comes down, hears whimpering sounds, and now he knows he's got that Xana's still alive and he can't allow that because he she has seen him. So she goes into the he goes into the room and he says, It's okay, I'm here to help you. And just to keep her quiet, and then he attacks her again. And then maybe uh, at that point is the thud sound where her, she's hitting the floor because that's where she's heard, seen on the floor when the law enforcement officer got there. Doesn't that sound really pretty good right there? I mean, that, that scenario right there. And then there's another one where Xana's in the bathroom, similar thing, and he's killed Ethan, and then Xana's right there and then attacked again. But look at that. She retreats to the room. They both are on the bed, and he kills both of them. And they're both on the bed. And then when he comes back downstairs after going upstairs looking for the knife sheath, he says, it's okay, I'm here to help you, to keep her quiet. And then he ends up finishing her off, and then she ends up falling on the floor, and that's where the loud thud at 417. Then the dog's barking. There's a lot of noise going on in the house at this point. And he gets the hell out of there right then, drives away at a high rate of speed at 420. What do you think of that one? I think that's the one that I think I kind of I like that one the most. I think I might just make a video just on that. What do you think? <laughs> I mean, just that portion right there. Because that all matches up with the, the uh, probable cause, all the different sounds, etc. Yeah, it's Brian Koberger, Alibaba. It's not whoever did it. It's Brian Koberger. Yeah. No, I didn't say chase anybody up. What do you mean chases are upstairs? Who? What are you talking about? <laughs> Sands opens the door. He attacks Xana. What? It may be a little weird that BK doesn't go after Dylan Mortensen too. No, not really. No, not really. It's not weird at all because I, I just ex I've explained it probably 95 times already. Is that you at this point you got the dogs barking? There's a lot of sounds going on. Ethan wasn't supposed to be there. Perhaps even Kaylee wasn't supposed to be there. He's expected. Here's what Brian Cooper could have expected when he went into the house: that at four in the morning, Zana. Madison, Kaylee, um, Dylan Mortensen, and Bethany Funk were all asleep at that time. That's what he would have expected. But when he goes up to uh, Madison's room, all of a sudden Kaylee's on the bed. Now there's a fight going on, and thing, uh, you know, things aren't smooth now. And then you got now there's somebody hearing it, and you know, instead of sort of sneaking in and sort of just quickly bum rushing. Zana, who he thought maybe was alone, he isn't able to do that. She saw him. Now he's chasing after her. Oh, my God, now there's Ethan in there. And then there's this, all this noise going on with the dogs barking. And he wants to get out of the house as quick as possible now. And he's just on a, he's just on a mission to get the hell out of the house. He's not looking to see if there's somebody else to kill. And that's why. Here's what we know, everybody. He drove away at a high rate of speed. Why do you think he did that? If everything went smoothly, just as planned, he would have drove out of there the same slow, methodical pace he did on all the loops. He took off at a high rate of speed because things weren't right and he was nervous that somebody might be calling 911 or something would be going on at this point. Maybe even realizing that there are two other people that live in the house and they are going, they might be calling somebody. So he wants to get the hell out of there. Zana, uh, listen, Dylan Mortensen and Bethany Funk have absolutely nothing to do with the murders. And if by some miracle they did, I'm going to go, I'll fly down, I'll shoot a crow with a BB gun, <laughs> rip off its feathers and cook it up in the new wave oven with a little lemon pepper and we'll just be eating the hell out of that thing but they don't okay i really have no belief whatsoever 
that either one of them had anything to do with this whatsoever. And I think if they did, law enforcement would have already found that out, don't you think? They cut a deal with her, Gray. They know that she's involved. They just cut a deal. No way. She wouldn't just be allowed to hang out at schools and go to back to a university. You know, there's no way in hell they'd let her be out drinking and randomly hanging out. If they cut some deal, they'd be like sequest. You know, having her on the side somewhere where they can monitor, so she didn't just get drunk somewhere and spurt out some story about. Oh, I'm. A yeah, there's no way, man. I feel like I'm getting a stuffy nose or something. Well, that's identifiers. All right. <laughs> yeah, I thought that was pretty fun, that show tonight. That's why I like, I mean, I love going over this case myself because I think that my shows are helping a lot of people that were sort of confused about a lot of different elements. It make I'm making sense of things that people can finally go, you know what, geez, yeah, tunnels? <laughs> Electrical, uh, uh, you know, sewage systems. And so I think I'm actually helping and making a difference in just sort of the general overall sort of knowledge of the case. Like when you, you know, there's people out there, some of you didn't really know the layout very well. But when you see it here, it's really kind of simple, right? I mean, we haven't done the full, like if you go to the head camera here and we start over at the very end. Uh, for those of you maybe still aren't really sure like that's the front of the house. That's that If I go to the drone uh, the not the drone footage the uh, Just go right to the front here Turn around that nope, back a little bit Now nope, a little forward right there This door right there is where we're at So just keep that in mind here, and that's Bethany Funk's room, and that's the storage unit or the, you know, the room that says storage. So here's the front door. We're going through it. And after the door opens, there's a storage on the right there. Take a left. This is Bethany Funk's room. And when you turn around, see this right here? That's the, there's a, um, some ceiling here where the stairs go up. And you come back around, then you go up the stairs. Now we're in the living room where the TV is right by that front window on the second floor here. And then you, yeah, there's no, I don't have a ceiling on in here. I mean, I guess what we could do is turn those back on just because it looks kind of funny. Uh, here's that ceiling and where's the other one? Third, first floor, sec, two B, no, it's three. This is three here. To, third floor, it is right there. Boom. All right, go back to the head camera. Now there's a ceiling in here. And you go down here, and this is where Zana Kernodal's room is. And that's that window that faces out to the same street where the front door is on the right side. And then right here, this is where Bethany or uh, Dylan Mortensen is. And Dylan Mortensen was in a horrendous spot. She was right below Madison Mogan's bedroom, right next to the kitchen, right next to the living room, and not far away from Zana Kernodal's room. Uh, Bethany Funk was below... Dylan Mortensen, or actually, not really, she was below the living room, so if you were going to take a look at it from above, but she's kind of below but in front of, so here's where Bethany Funk was, the living room is right up here, and Dylan Mortensen was right here, so looking at it from the side, this is Bethany Funk, Dylan Mortensen. So she's above, but directly behind. So Bethany Funk was in a place that was a lot less sort of like, it, I bet you she didn't hear quite as much, right? So uh, going back to the head camera, now we're heading up those stairs. And then right above me right here, you can just see the frame of it just for a second right there at the top. That's the window that looks out um, in the back of the house. So if we were going to look at, go back to, 
this footage and go to the very beginning, turn around, that's this window right here. So we're at the top of the stairs, then we make it all the way up to, and this is Kaylee's room. And that sliding glass door right there is one of the doors that you can't see on my 360 degree because it's uh, around the side, back around the corner over here. If I go a little bit further, so that door is right around this corner on the deck here. All right, so then after that, you come out of Kaylee's room and there's a bathroom right there that's mentioned in the probable cause. And then here is Madison Mogan's room where both her and Kaylee were found. Madison had the knife to her right side. And then you go down the stairs and then right there is Dylan's room on the right. And then just to the left is the kitchen and then you just head right out to the sliding glass doors. Now some people are saying that maybe he entered through one of the, the sliding window here. I have no way to prove that. Law enforcement didn't say that. They just said, you know, he exited or entered the kitchen. All right. So that help out a little bit more for those of you who don't really, you know, know it. I'm going to hide that. Hide this one. I like having those not on. It's easy to see stuff. Who said, in my opinion? What are you talking about, Stacy? Be well for, be fell for the love of God. Please stop saying stupid things. Who are you talking to? Is there somebody with that name or? <laughs> oh, uh, my BK makes a more likely cleanup consultant than a perp. Random strand, well, hey, be well there, you know, you're wrong, okay? I mean, you can, I think you come into these things to try to get attention, right? Because we just went through the whole thing. And uh, if you're still out there going, man, man, this is, yeah, wow. I think it's, he's being framed or something. There's just something wrong with you at that point. You know, it's not like, well, I just have a different opinion. It's, it means that you're being willfully ignorant. You know what that means? Well, cool, Jay. Maybe I should make that a video, what I just did right there. Just clip that out make that a video. <laughs> I mean, I have a lot of videos that I could make that I think are helpful to people, you know. Um, and I think that's kind of what I am good at. Now, I also like to work on a whole bunch of different, um, you know, we do a whole bunch of different cases out there. But right now, this is sort of like where I want to be because... Uh, it was so inundated for so many months of just nonsensical stuff over and over and over again that I'm hoping to offset some of that with reality. Give, a, give people a place where you can go and sort of like, okay, this is real here. Yeah, all right, well, you didn't have to block, uh, remove what Dan, uh, Daniel Johnson said. I agree with that too. I think Dylan Mortensen heard a hell of a lot more than what was in the probable cause document and was probably, you know, maybe sat down with a, you know, a psychologist or something and really thought through it more. Oh, yeah, I know I heard. And there's probably more information. I agree with that. I've said that before. I don't think she's hiding something. Like, I don't think, oh, man, yeah, yeah, she should have, you know, she heard something. I don't think that at all. I think... Uh, People are just looking for content when they come up with that Dylan Mortensen and Bethany Funk are somehow involved. They look for ways to do it. Well, cool, Jay. Maybe I should just take that little clip, though, right there, don't you think? <laughs> Maybe just do a little intro to it, a little outro, uh, show people how to subscribe and hit the notification bell. Yeah. Anyways, thanks everybody for uh, helping support the channel tonight and showing up. Kind of a, you know, I guess we're three hours and 20 minutes in here. So thanks, Wild, Wise Child, Serious Black, Scout and Dude, uh, Tammy Lee. And the boys said, will you read this the wrong way? <laughs> now it's funny for some reason. <laughs> I don't know why it's funny now. All of a sudden it is funny. 
uh, Tammy Lee, uh, Bullet, Mama 4, 57 Rose, Don, uh, Audrey Kassam, uh, Augie, uh, Jessica Schubach, Amber Maiden, Sirius Black, another old GHI freak, and thank you. That was a cat eye. And then Mama 457 Rose, Dan Hawk, Plato, Cindy J, American Lady, Wise Child, Don. As in, now what was that from Die Hard? Oh yeah, that's right. It was that was something different. That was a different part of the movie when he said, "Yeah, the Asian Don." He wanted to free the all the uh, imprisoned brethren terrorists around the world, uh, including the Asian Don. He started na <laughs> naming all these things. Okay, didn't even really exist. I mean, they existed, I guess, in terms of what he was saying, but. Anyways, then uh, Don, then Scout and Dude, J Case, Turtle Runner, uh, Eel Lee, K Me, A A. And by the way, you guys, when I, if I make a video on a different case, like a uh, you know an interesting case, I'll, I'll I'll present it exactly the way I present this case. So I hope you watch those too, because there are so many cases out there that are incredibly interesting. And I just wish you guys would, oh, it's not, it's not Idaho 4, forget it. You know, click on it anyways and just watch it, all right? If you like the way I do the show, or at least the videos, then please watch any video that I make, because I'm not going to sort of like bore you to death with something, you know? Um, hopefully they're interesting anyways. Well, thanks, M.W. All right, and thank you, A, a couple times. Uh, and then, you know they exist. And then, Dallas Rose, Kathy T, Mark Willis, Benny, and A again. Oh, so A, yeah. He was talking about the audio. Uh, remember how he, he said, um, I thought he was talking about the audio in the video that I've got or something. But he was talking about that crazy... 155 fake audio that people have. And um, and then Benny became a member. Dallas Rose became a member. And then also Audrey Casson. Uh, and then I gifted five memberships uh, myself. So there you go. Yeah, yeah, Mercedes Vega. I mean, it really is interesting. Okay, so for the those of you who are still sitting here, I'll just quickly throw you a breakdown of it. Mercedes Vega, uh, she was at a, um, I think this is in, it's Texas, right? My brain is just, where was, no, no, I think it's Arizona. But anyway, she was a, she worked as a, a, you know, twice a week she'd be an exotic dancer, sometimes do the private parties. She was really pretty, and she was just a college student type student, you know, trying to make, become like a physical therapist or something. I mean, she was really, you know, like a really intelligent, smart person. And then she was going out that night maybe to meet somebody up at the dance club that she works at, you know, just to hang out and have some drinks. And as on the way out, she disappears. You see her on surveillance camera, walk out of the elevator sort of vestibule area. She walks out, and then she's heading towards her car, but she never makes it to into the car, I guess. But they find blood right where her car was, and somehow she was, like, hit over the head and put in her own vehicle and driven away um, because, you know, that's what, because of later the facts show that. Uh, uh, then that same night, early in the morning, they find this car 70 miles away burning, and inside the car, was, she was in the car with a you know, bludgeoned in the head, gunshot wound to the arm, a uh, bleach was poured down her throat, and um, what was the other one? Yeah, bleach was poured down her throat, and, you know, and then she died of smoke inhalation. I mean, she was, it was just horrendous. But that wasn't her vehicle that she was in. They found her vehicle just two miles from where she was abducted from. So it sort of seems like that she was driven to that location and then transferred her into another car 
and then drove somewhere else because there's a huge there's like an hour or so of missing time or in there I have it all written down somewhere but it's an absolutely nutty story didn't I say she was shot yeah so she was shot in the arm bludgeoned over the head bleach poured down her throat and that likely is to cover up perhaps a forced sort of sexual act and um, man absolutely crazy one there you guys and I had the, the family it came on even one night it was two of her friends her mother and father came on oh it's crazy MW absolutely nuts so that's the Mercedes Vega case and uh, I think I made a video on that didn't I I might have to do a different video on it and just do me instead of a script you know I don't I think my videos when I'm scripting them aren't quite as good as the ones where I'm just like talking working through something yeah yeah you know like that it's just it's better I just have an outline and just kind of speak the way I speak <laughs> and work through it but I think I'm gonna do another one on it just to yeah that's how I've been doing the videos that I do I mean sometimes it'll be like this to be honest watch I'll go like this yeah so Zana walked in the Zana walked into the room and she went around the corner and you know I'm just making this up this has nothing to do with the case if I was just talking though like Zana came into the room and she walked around the corner and she bumped it she came around the corner and she bumped into the wall then after she bumped into the wall she walked down the hallway and went up some steps I mean she walked down the hallway and walked up the stair, you know, and then I just edit out the crap. Sometimes I leave it in when I repeat it, you know, but I'm just telling, I don't, you know, it's not as often. Like sometimes I'll go three minutes without screwing up, but sometimes I go, oh, Jesus. Like when I get the tongue twisters, you know. Anyways, thank you guys very much for being here. And you know, the worst part is when you're moving around on the screen, like if you're going like this. So, so she walked in and then she uh, tripped on the th Oh, where was I when I said she walked in? So I got to start back. So all of a sudden it goes, you know, like it's in a whole different spot. So it's almost better when you're talking not to be moving anything on the screen. Just to for any hints out there for... Just wing it. That's right. That's what I'm talking about. I think I could do way more videos that way, too. Have you made any videos on the woman in court? The women? What do you mean the woman in court? What do you mean for? Yeah, I've made tons of those. Yeah. I was one of the, probably the only true crime YouTuber that's a YouTuber today. One of the few, anyways, that covered... Jennifer Dulos's case at the very beginning. I, I've been covering it since the very beginning, had the probable cause. We went over it last night. You must have missed that video. Um, we went over, last night, we went over the probable cause document again, and then I watched a little bit in court today and was just like, oh, man, this is amazing. Got all the video and everything. Yeah, I do have a plan. That's why I do an outline. Just kind of jot down some thoughts in a general order. And then when I think of something while I'm talking, a lot of times I think of something and I make sure I put a note over on the side to make sure to throw that in there. You know, like the other day I realized when I was making the video that the fact that you could see Xana on the ground means that Ethan is off to one of the sides and likely off to the left side where the blood came out. Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to show the uh, trial tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, but sometimes people get angry, Sarah, when I don't entertain it. Because if it's your, what I consider your bullshit, <laughs> let's say you said something and I went, oh, man, that's a bunch of crap. You'd probably be angry. But here's the thing on this show, everybody. I'm just, you know, weeding through... Uh, sometimes it's, you know, like, for example, like American Lady, I was like, ah, I don't know, you just made that part up. But later on, when you think about it, you know, that's definitely a possibility that the, um, you know, Xana is in the bathroom there. We just think of it like Thanksgiving dinner in here. 
you know, when you're at the table and you're arguing about politics or something, and then after that, you're all sitting around watching the football game, getting along. Yeah. Yeah. So, not to take it personal, I need to. Yeah, and, and one of the things for me, I, I don't get to read all the chat, so I've made many er like really crappy errors in reading the comments and um, thinking that they were saying something else, but I missed the comment prior to that, you know? Like I missed the comment before that would have made that make sense, and then I say something, and then later I see it like after the show or something, and I'm trying to avoid that uh, Plato uh, has me <laughs> has me set up. I think I did pretty good today. I wasn't too bad. <laughs> Look at the note. Look at the note. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I've been in contact with. Um, let's see. What are, what are you guys talking about? Oh, yeah, what I was going to say was I've been in contact with uh, Mercedes Vega's mom. And um, apparently, you know, at some point soon we're supposed to get some video footage or something. That, that case is ridiculous, man. And you want to hear something crazy about that one? That one, I think, started in April, right? Isn't that right? And nobody heard a word about it. I mean, it was like nothing and then finally the parents were like hey this we gotta say and then six months later they were able to start talking in the media because they thought the cops were really on to something and they were going to do something but they didn't do shit or they're probably doing something but they haven't arrested anybody it seems like a case that should be solvable quickly i mean you've got a vehicle that people were driving yes it burned but you know where did that come from the surveillance cameras when the her car was dropped off uh, DNA evidence somewhere in her vehicle, for God's sakes. I mean, there's got to be something somewhere. Right. Me too, Bridget. I think it's ridiculous. So, and so I'm, I'll get a hold of her probably tomorrow again and say, "Hey, what's going on? Let's uh, let's get moving again." All right. So, thanks everybody for being here tonight, and thanks for making it a more enjoyable type of night. Just every, you know, the whole communications and uh, you know weren't too many trolls just at the beginning you know you get the crazy people they pop in every once in a while and so I thought it was cool <laughs> so thanks everybody we'll see you uh, tomorrow all right well, anything else I'm not sure uh, when do you guys want me to do the trial I mean should I still do my show in the evening because I, I mean I can play it um, I'm gonna try to get it down to like three hours though I think it's too there's too much like just stuff sitting around they're not doing stuff in there hey welcome Sarah Jane and by the way you have um, access uh, hurry up and practice you have emojis to use now click on the emoji button you've got like 20 different emojis Awesome show tonight. I really enjoy the shows when you go like this one did. I know it's hard to find many like this one though. You know, because most of the time we don't there's isn't really I don't have 3D models and of every case, etc. But I mean, it's cool when there's a lot of mapping stuff because then it's the same for me where you just keep going through it. You want me to do it at night? Hmm. Yeah, the only problem is it sort of takes up the show show, you know, when I do the show. You know. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe, maybe we'll, we'll try one tomorrow night, and then if that sort of doesn't really work, if we don't get a lot of people watching. But we're going to do the Michelle Traconis trial. I think it's going to be really interesting if you guys show up, because I've got it all mapped out. I, we did this years ago. And it's all mapped out, it's all the same information, but today I watched it and I dialed in the surveillance footage camera locations.
at the school and on the route there. You can really see it. It's pretty amazing when you can like just go to Street View and see every single thing that they're showing on the cameras. So that'll be tomorrow. All right, Michelle Traconis. I'm going to start editing that right after this. Yeah, but that's kind of tough, Jessica. Yeah, I mean, that's a lot of work for me. You know, then how do I make videos? I need to make videos, too. Well, thanks, Ruthie. But you might say that some of these conspiracy theory YouTubers are smarter because, you know, if, it, if it's all about the, um, you know, the money element where they get tons and tons of views on and ad revenue, man, they're geniuses. Boy, they get like, uh, they get so many people watching those things because that stuff sells. I'd be so good at that, but I'd be embarrassed. Can't do it. Um, I don't know. I'm maybe in the evening. I mean, I don't know. Tomorrow we'll try it. Just to, the night show will be the Draconis case. Maybe at uh, I don't know. Maybe we'll try to do an earlier one at four or so. What do you guys think of that? Because it'll kind of keep going, lingering in. Maybe five o'clock at the very latest. We'll have to see. But anyways, thank you guys very much for being here tonight. Appreciate it. Um, I thought that was pretty fun. I didn't really have any phone calls. Oh, we got one, but didn't answer it. <laughs> so thanks again for being here. We'll see you guys tomorrow. And as I always say, until next time. By the way, look at that. <laughs> it's, only, it's kind of only a sticker, though. It kind of sucks. <laughs> but until next time, uh, be safe out there. Yeah, I've been doing this true crime thing for quite a while. Yeah, we'll now. just catch it on the show, Amber, and not the live trial. I have not seen We're one behind. person. Right. That is a crime dissector, like rejector. Right? I'm a certified human lie detector. Gonna get ya on a stretcher if you try and play me like Good. a All right. projector. Crime sector. Crime sector. Professor Gray is gonna give another lecture. Crime collector. Freak connector. And I'm always gonna be a pop attacker. Fool deflector. Interceptor. And I'm meaner than a specter with a vector. On his pector. With a respect. Just remember I've a temple fucking check. I have no agenda. I have a agenda. And I'll serve it to you straight without the blender And in the end, I'm gonna send ya On a mission to reveal the true offender And by the way, everybody, that's Lori Daybell yeah, so just get right back to work, all right, everybody? That's Lori Daybell dancing up there for damn sure Well, that was great! Yes, it was, that was Lori Daybell I made a perfect model of her, even with the bright lipstick and everything Oh, wow, that really did look like her, Gray Well, thank you very much, Mary Lou, I really appreciate that all right, well, you have a great evening, Mary Lou. Okay, wait a minute, how come you're nice to me tonight? Ah, uh, why not? Good night, everybody. Yay! Wow, you didn't say yay like you always do. See, there you go, Gray, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> that Mary Lou, I tell you what. What a nutter, huh? Anyways, all right, we'll see you guys tomorrow, and be safe out there.